For EP, climbing walls and handholds is our business, but that's really not why we're here. We're here to enrich people's lives and introduce climbing to the world. We know that once somebody gets an opportunity to go indoors and climb on a climbing wall, that they're going to be hooked and they're going to be a climber for life. Welcome to Imst in Austria for the fourth LEAD World Cup for 2014. We're in the beautiful town of Imst, just 50 kilometers west of Innsbruck. And it's a very small town indeed, less than 10,000 people live here. But over this weekend, 101 of the world's best LEAD climbers have descended on Imst for qualifications. 2,700 feet above sea level here. See some of the best climbers in the world have arrived. And this is their final preparation before the World Championships will be taking place shortly in Gijon in northern Spain. So we started the event with 101 athletes in both categories. And now the final coming up, we have eight of the best in the men and women going head to head tonight. Thank you. 
the introduction of the athletes all 16 of them we've got a real top international field here today and welcome to Imst we're live here the athletes are due to be going up onto the course in about six minutes time Sebastian Halanki has come to join me as well it's going to be great to have his views and we'll hear what he's got to say about the course very shortly but first of all what route has been set by our chief route setter here Paul Deville let's have a listen to what he's got to say So, hello, I'm Paul De Will uh, from France. I am chief route setter and I set international comps for nearly 10 or more, more than 10 years ago. So, uh, in the main uh, final, we have um, different tricky moves and different types of the, the first things are starting just up to the three triangles the bottom is really really cool and then you will see a kind of big dino on the left on the big hole then there is a resistance part it's not too easy huh? <laughs> it's quite hard and then on the, after the gray volume you have a, a big uh, blue volume like that so it's not easy to understand for the climbers and it's quite uh, risky because when you 
when you start to, to go in the, in the way and after you have no chance to go to go back so you have to engage and so it will be an hard move too just between the two uh, last volumes blue vo volumes before the roof then the to enter in the roof it's pretty powerful i think maybe we will lose some climbers but it's it's, it's the it's the comp huh? uh, so uh after the in the roof on the two uh, yellow boxes uh it's not really powerful it's mostly spectacular moves we wanted to do so normally the climbers have has to turn with the feet first i hope they will see that and we put some chalk mark to 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 help them the roof it's not the hardest part so it's just i think for the audience for everybody even for the climbers it's more special move and I think I hope they will enjoy it. The women's route, it's a very, very long route. Uh, long as the semi-final for the men yesterday. So, um, m most important for, for them will be to, um, to resist. It's more endurance climbing, but uh, it's not so easy till the um, the orange the first orange volume and starting we start with some uh, balance move so it's not easy to to stay really static so they will have to engage a little and then the roof uh, like for the boys um, a little they have to turn uh, and they have two options to turn in one side or the other side so um, it's not the hardest part, but even for like for the boys, it's it's it's, uh, it's complexity of climbing. And then uh, till the the leap, um, it's it's quite powerful uh, up to the two green volume, and after they are. There is a classical move uh, between the two purple volume. It's a cross, you have a little hedge like this and you have to cross in a mono. And to cross over it's hard, pretty hard. And the five last moves are really hard when you climb till the top. I think if we have a top it will be wonderful, but I think possible but not more than one really interesting to hear what Paul had to say about the roots and we're here we're live the crowd are in the athletes are here the officials are all here and we're getting ready to go for the start of the 4 C lead World Cup for 2014 my name's Adrian Battersby and with me is uh, Sebastian Halanki and we're just waiting for the first athlete to come out Sebastian welcome great to have you on board Hello, thank you for welcoming me. Well, yeah, as yesterday I didn't manage to get into finals. I'm right here. <laughs> bad luck. Again, co-commentating once more. <laughs> so, yeah, it's cool to be here. But, it, it, you know, it's great to, uh, to have you here. You speak very well, you, you know, you're very educated and, you, you know, you speak with real intelligence about the wall. So we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you about the men's route as we look here at uh, Stefano Gisolfi of Italy. And you saw, um, you know, you just heard what Paul had to say about the men's route. What did you think about his comments? Yeah, it was funny because I was reading it right before going here. And for me, it looked pretty much, as he said, the first part of the route looks like not too hard, but kind of technical. Yeah. And yeah, I think you can lose a lot of power there. Yeah. Because if you do something wrong, maybe it, you will waste a lot of energy. But yeah. the slappy part is basically not looking too hard, actually, just a little bit technical. Yeah. And then after those kind of triangle volumes there on the slab, yeah. a little bit later, you've got a kind of dyno move to the left 
And this looks kind of sketchy. I think it will be a little bit uncomfortable for some of the athletes. Yeah. And after that, in my opinion, it just starts getting harder and harder and harder until the roof with a few uncomfortable movements. And oh, he's gone. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, that was really unexpected. Well, we, we, uh, we might see a replay back shortly, but that was... Uh, Sebastian, oh. that was an absolute shock. And yeah. I, I wasn't, I, I've got so many more questions because um, Stefano was the man that just put you out. <laughs> yeah, that's one. true. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, you know, it's, it must be a horrible feeling. You must be, feel quite embarrassed when that sort of thing happens because he's literally walking away with a four against his name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think for him it's just like, it was really a pity for him because he could have climbed so much further. And yeah, what to say? I mean, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good. He's taking he's got a bit of hard. Fever. Yeah, yeah good, that's, that's, good that's nice. Well, he's coming in the lead. Here's a replay. Yeah, he just slipped there. I think he wanted to go for it like a little bit more dynamic, not like risking a little bit in order to not waste too much of energy. But yeah. sometimes, if you wait, waste, uh, if you risk too much on those slappy parts, you can easily slip and well. Yeah, yeah we're just watching the replay again. Yeah, the momentum took him away, and well, there you go. Even the best, even the most experienced climbers on international scene can make the most elementary mistake. It's quite amazing. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, climbing is such a special sport. I mean, every route has a different and an own individual character, and yeah. Sometimes a route really fits well for you, and sometimes you just don't get into the route at all. Yeah. So those things can really well and easily happen well, in climbing World Cups. <laughs> Stefano Gisolfi is uh, sat in the leader's chair at the moment uh, on his own, and uh, he is currently leading, but uh, it's fair to say there's no chance he's going to medal at all. We've only four against his name. Um, you know, Paul made comments about he's, you know, he's put a few little um, interesting ones a little bit further up the wall, and you know, he's put a couple of ones in there where he said, you know, it's it's the point of no return. That if you try and do a particular problem one way, there's no way of getting back. So if you go at it the wrong way, you're finished. Yeah, yeah, and it's true. And I think that's quite in, like in the middle of the route where it's not in the route yet, but relatively steep. Yeah. There you've got a few movements with some volumes. And if you just go there, if you get it in the wrong section, you will just fall because I don't think you are able to climb backwards there. Yeah, absolutely. Here's uh, Gaultier Super of France, and uh, we're going to have a look, little look more carefully here. He's been a man uh, who's been in pretty good form. He got a, a bronze medal in Haiyang. He didn't compete in Chamonix and took, um, oh, sorry, I, he did compete in Chamonix. He took fifth place in Briançon, and in Chamonix he was 18th place. So. Uh, just uh, didn't reach the final in, in Chamonix, but he's a uh, he's a great climber, this man, and uh, only 23 years old, so plenty of climbing left in him to come. Let's see how he uh, handles this one. It's an awkward one, isn't it? Because it's you just can't easily reach across. Yeah, it's pretty awkward, and you have to. It's really for balancing. Yeah. There you see. He just yeah. So yeah, you you have to do this move kind of careful. If you do it too fast, you just slip out, yeah. as, as it happened to Stefano. Yeah, so Stefano sort of almost just wedged his fingers in, got his balance correctly, then moved his weight across, whereas the previous climber actually tried to sort of almost do a little bit of a dyno, you know, yeah, without the I jump. Think, and yeah, he and just wanted to risk a little bit, just not yeah. willing to lose too much of energy. And I can understand that quite well, because for me, usually when I'm going into a competition route and I'm really psyched, like in finals, uh, I also tend to do like something a little bit more dynamic, risking a little bit, just in order to be able to have a <laughs> lot of energy yeah. on the top movements where it starts getting actually important. Yeah. But something like that, can also turn out in this way, so wow, that's what happened to him. We noticed with your style, and uh, you know, there were, there were two schools of thought, thought with with climbing, with lead climbing. That some athletes like yourself, you don't mess around, you don't like resting, do you? You like to get up that wall quickly, and, and yeah. occasionally you will have a rest when you feel as if you're tired. Yeah, but, but it, you know, you don't. Some, but some athletes will take a rest even in the very early stage because the, the rest has been provided and we saw that with the women's semi-finals it's sometimes some of the girls were having a rest quite low down yeah and, and were taking the opportunity but you wouldn't do that you would just go past it and carry on yeah well it 
always depends also of the physical type that you are. For example, myself, I'm a very maximal power based climber. I'm having kind of a lot of weight for a lead climber at least. Yeah. And in this way, for me, it's important to get fast over the sections where it's maybe not so good to shake or yeah. I don't know where I could lose some power shaking. But for me, on the points where I'm able to shake, it's good to shake for me. But I, if I start shaking too early, I kind of get tired. Also mentally, I get tired. And yeah. also, like, the speed gets out of my climbing. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to better climb fast in the first movements or in the first half of the route and then if I find some rest slow down a bit. So here's Gaultier now, so he's just moved into these two triangular volumes and this was the one where uh, Paul said, you know, this could, this could cause people a few problems, this is not easy. Yeah, I think there it starts like getting move by move harder and harder. Yeah. The move. I don't think that those moves are especially hard. No, the no. next ones are a little bit tricky. I think they're eventually a bit uncontrolled, as you can see here. Yeah. And at the next section here between those two volumes, yeah. if you do a mistake there, you just cannot climb backwards anymore. Yeah. And as we see, already one of those impossible tiny holes for him. Uh, just uh, come on, we are uh, keeping uh, an eye on the YouTube chat as well as the uh, Twitter. If you do have any messages, do send them to IFSCWC. We will be uh, having a little chat and uh, talking, uh, answering any questions. But of course, we are going to concentrate um, very much on the climbing that's going on here. And uh, one comment I did hear earlier, Sashiyama isn't here. He's actually uh, doing some rock climbing with Akio Noguchi and uh, just taking a bit of time out of competition. There's plenty of events to go, and of course, a World Championship coming up shortly as well. And uh, so that's why, uh, you know, they're not competing. So they uh, almost, have, uh, you know, sometimes so many athletes do that, don't they, Sebastian? They're, they're quite happy to accept they're not going to compete for the world ranking points, and they're just going to climb, win individual tournaments. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. Uh, they rather focus on specific events, like the World Championships, for example. I believe that Sachi is planning to do this, yeah. just focusing on some specific important competitions, yeah. where he really tries to be fit and in his perfect shape. Yeah. Because a whole World Cup season is really hard, mainly for the mind. It's mentally and also physically a little bit difficult because you cannot really oh, train that much. Well, I was just about to say that this was these two boxes. Uh, you know, Paul had said that that could be an awkward area and we just saw it there. And he said that, you know, people would require a bit of power to get through there. Gaultier Saper just uh, just came to grief. He, uh, again, he has a little smile on his face. Uh, what do you think happened there? Well, I think he just basically ran out of steam. It, just got harder and harder with the time and you cannot really rest anywhere in this route so I think he just kind of got pumped and he couldn't do a lot more there. I think he had a really good go. Well unsurprisingly uh, Stefano Gisolfi uh, leaves, the, uh, leaves the seat. Let's have a little look at this again. In fact this is a little bit earlier on. In, uh, yeah, so it, this is a really awkward move I think. Yeah. It doesn't look comfortable at all. Yeah. We are taking a production from a local host broadcast here, so uh, we are sort of uh, in the hands of uh, what they decide to feed us down the line, although we, are, we may overrule occasionally. We do have a few of our cameras out there uh, giving us feed, but we're, we're trying to take their feed. Uh, we're not going to see the, unfortunately, we're not going to see the replay. Here comes Sean McCall. Um, while Sean's preparing, I just want to carry on our little chat about Sashiyama, because uh, he's got, you know, he got, oh, here's the replay. Let's just have a look at this. The sad, what, what happened? Yeah, I think, well, basically he tried to take some really small hold as an intermediate in order to be able to turn around his feet. But yeah. this intermediate, I think it might have been a little bit too small to really yeah. grab it. And then his hand kind of slipped. But I think he was basically already quite pumped there. He was, yeah, he was in trouble. Now, Sachiyama will be a, a real threat in the world champ because he might even bring his choke back with him this time. Now, yeah, you, t you tell me as a, as, a, you know, as a top international climber as you are, how hard is it if you if you can't actually get more chalk on your fingers? 
you know, and 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 Sachi won by quite a distance as well. You know, yeah. that, what a diff what difference does that really make to you? Does it you know does it mean that on those little pinch holds that you're really going to struggle with with the grip? Yeah, it's it's kind of awkward. I think often it's even more a mental thing because it just feels rather uncomfortable. But also after a while, it really starts getting harder because your hands are getting sweaty, mainly in hard sections. Yeah. And in this way also, mainly the round holes are feeling so slippery then after a while. For me, it's awful to climb without chalk. <laughs> uh, because after a while, I just feel so awkward in every hole. Yeah. So I think it was a great effort that he did there. It was quite incredible, Yeah, wasn't it? it was yeah. incredible. But yeah. also, it kind of gave him just like a little push. just. Yeah. Knowing, okay, now I just gotta go and I cannot hesitate anymore. And maybe that was even good in some way. Yeah. So Sean McCall here is uh, making uh, making this look quite comfortable at the moment. But Sean, Sean's a very accomplished cl climber, isn't he? And a top boulder also. Yeah, definitely. I think this route could be quite a good one for him because those kind of uncomfortable and maybe for other climbers awkward movements, he's yeah. going to do them a lot easier, I think, because he comes from bouldering. Yeah. And the jump was no stress <laughs> at all for him. No, not not for somebody who's who's one of the top sort of five in the world at bouldering. Like that, that's not a dino at all, is it really? Fair? No, it's just like <laughs> a little bit of further move. Yeah, he has those for breakfast. You know, I think Adam Ondra might to try doing a no hand rest on this big Big yeah. foothold there. Yeah, as we saw it yesterday in semi-finals. He does like those, doesn't he? Yeah, he likes to showboat a little bit, Adam. And uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we we may well see that. Well, we'll look out for that a bit later, Seb. Um, yeah, I'm quite curious. <laughs> so this was an area where, now, as you say, Paul said that we might trick a few here, but actually, you know, the guys are actually going up fairly comfortably here. You know, there's nothing, there's no difficulty from from Sean on that particular move at all. So. Uh, you know, this sometimes happens with the root setters, you know, they, they, they admitted themselves that sometimes they think they've set a really difficult area and everybody just walks straight past it and then they find trouble later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for example here, it's like, I think a place where it's kind of hard for the athletes. Yeah. Look at Sean here, he's also hesitating a little bit. Yeah. And I think he didn't feel comfortable with that movement at all. No. And also, I'm quite curious how he's going to do next movement i think he's going to undercross as well yeah but i think this is really uncomfortable and it's kind of powerful like it's really pumping your biceps yeah. just to uh, let you know the scores on the screen you're seeing here are just provisional scores we uh, we uh, have somebody who's uh, who's updating them, but they aren't official, so they only become official when we see them on some of the others, but it does give you a feeling as to how they're, uh, they're getting on, and they're going to be fairly accurate, unless, uh, unless they do something like miss, miss a clamp or something like that, we'll, uh, miss a clip we'll, uh, that we haven't noticed. But Sean's still currently in second place, just we're coming up towards the boxes soon, so there's this, this is the area where Gaultier, Super, and Sean there, uh, and Sean's still looking pretty strong here. Yeah. I think actually this section could be pretty much his style because he's a very powerful climber. And basically you need the climbing intelligence here to use those boxes very efficient. And yeah. you need a lot of core power. Yeah. And I think that are both skills that he's got. Now just explain for the for the viewers at home, the clock in the bottom right hand corner, what significance does that have? Is is that literally his time? So once that time goes, but whatever point he's at is, is over. He, he has to you know, this two, three minutes twenty that's on here now. Yeah, well at, Oh Oh no. Well Sean got further. I think he got one step further. Yeah, he, he just got like yeah, one move more and then from that hold a plus, like one and a half a move. Yeah. Well, oh, that, wow. was, that was unusual because I, didn't, I didn't expect that. He didn't even get close. And uh, we're just looking at a replay. This is something a bit earlier. Uh, here we are. So this is. Uh, I think I this is the. Yeah. I believe that this turn is harder than the root setters expected because yeah. I remember the root setter saying that this turnaround was not going to be too hard, just like something no. No. for 
for the crowd, <laughs> which looks interesting. But I think it's harder than in the route is expected. Yeah. Well, we have a bit of a bit of a shot there. I think we uh, we all expected Sean McCall to to go a little bit further than that. He's uh, such a gentleman. He thanks his belay and he's away. And, uh, he's, he uh, has a little chat. Just let you know, this is this is this is how I'm. I, I missed it out on the previous hold, so you're in the lead now. But uh, yeah, the, the conversation these guys are having, you know, what you said, what are, what are they talking about here? Yeah, I think they are talking exactly about that section because I think it was a little bit of a weird section for them. Yeah. And I think both didn't feel like really sticking it the right way. Yeah. 50 problems here on the men's. And there you see that Nicole just a fraction ahead with a 39 plus. And here he is, Adam Ondra, unmistakable figure. Yeah, he's definitely, uh, he's really unmistakable. <laughs> he's a lovely guy, and uh, obviously he's uh, got a bit of a name for his outdoor climbing. Seems to climb some of the most difficult problems in the world with the... Uh, yeah, with he's beast. a super strong climber for sure. Yeah. I have met him one week ago, actually training in Innsbruck. I've been yeah. also in the climbing gym in Innsbruck, and to... I've been to a rock as well, which is close to Innsbruck, named Götterwandel. Yeah. And I met him there, and he's a really cool guy, and he's super strong, and mainly he has got great technical abilities and yeah. the experience from the rock. I'm really curious how he's going to do in this route, but I think he has all options for this competition. Yeah, he's certainly, uh, he's certainly a man to, to look out for. There's no doubt about that. And. A little bit of a. It'll be interesting to see uh, how he handles these next few. Like when Paul was talking about the route, uh, you know, he actually said that the men's route towards the end was actually quite easier, and, it w and he put a lot of the hard stuff a little bit earlier on. So yeah. the last four, four or five holes were actually a little bit easier than, you know, sort of more of a, you know, this is where you can take the glory and people can applaud you for being so good. And uh, Adam here. So far, no worries. No, I think this lap is really much his style. He's moving very efficient in those kind of yeah. slap parts and not wasting any energy. Well, Adam uh, was ninth in Haiyang, he was 27th in Chamonix, and 8th in Briançon. So, by his standards, he's actually uh, been uh, away from the podium and not by a short distance, by quite a distance. Yeah, he had a little bit of a rough time in those first World Cups this year. A lot of things were just like a little bit unfortunate and they could have gone a lot better yeah. in, in Haiyang in the first World Cup. He kind of decided for the wrong foothold position. He decided to put a heel hook where you actually had to put your foot just stepping with the toe yeah. and he slipped. And well, in Chamonix, everybody knows he forgot <laughs> the first quick draw. Yeah, slight problem there. So yeah. Well, those kind of things can happen, but yeah. let's wish him the best of luck here, and Absolutely. hopefully he's going to fall. Well, he's got something to prove, and um, you know, do you think that he'll be aware that some of the other climbers won't have gone so far, because just simply because of the time that yeah, he's sure. been called up, especially with Gisolf, you have to only fall, but... He definitely relies on those things. For example, yesterday, uh, everybody knew you have to climb very far in semi-final route, yeah. because it took so long. For me, yeah. personally, I was warmed up like about 45 minutes too early because it was just <laughs> taking so long. Yeah, yeah. So you do realize of those things mainly by the time. Yeah, of course. Well, here we are with uh, Adam Ondra. He's uh, looking very comfortable so far. Yeah, he's still looking very relaxed. And he was a little bit like this in the semi-final. It was almost a shock to see him come off in the semi-final because it looked like he just made a a simple holding error that he, he just went for a grip and just didn't get a uh, you know just didn't get hold of it well enough. Yeah, I know it was kind of weird, but it was it was very strange, wasn't it? it was strange. Well, he saved power for today. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, he's blowing. He's having a little bit of a break there. Yeah, but he's still looking very comfortable. I think he's still quite fresh. I think Sean McCall is one of the shorter athletes out there, and he is out of these, one of the taller guys on the circuit. And it's interesting now because we're coming up to these little little boxes, which are absolutely Whoa. upside down. Yeah, that was a bit of a. I think now it starts yeah. getting high. 
And I think now he starts getting a bit of pump. But that was quite a risky maneuver there, because he just reached out. With, and, and if he'd have not, you know, he almost looked look Yeah, the he just reached out, and I think he was kind of grabbing it even a little bit in the wrong way. Yeah. But he still he could stick it, luckily. Well, here we go. So now we come to the awkward one. Everybody's got through this one so far. Uh, well, except for yourself, of course. But now it's, it's the second one. Now this is where Super went out when he was trying to hold on. Yeah, now it starts getting really interesting. Yeah. Adam is definitely having a little, little look here. Yeah, Adam's got a good grip here. Now this is where Sean McCall went. And he, Adam's setting himself and he's got right. it. I think he's now getting really pumped here. But still hanging on the wall, that's good. Yeah, that Adam takes the lead. Come on, let's yeah, let's uh, let's have action on the on the climber. Now he is really having to fight, I think. Ah, but he's even going for a rest. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, we are uh, we are at the behest of our. Uh, local uh, OB crew here, but we do have the ability to overrule, so we will uh, probably do that a few times. Now we've, we've seen he's going to show it. Adam's definitely having a bit of a rest here. Okay. Crowd are getting into it. Oh! Just round the corner. Yeah, I think he was just like really tired because the movements are quite much harder than they seem at yeah. the beginning. Yeah. And I think it's just a really, really pumpy fitness route. You, you have got quite a few hard sections, which are also quite uncomfortable to climb and very technical. And I think it's just all the way super pumpy, and you've got not anywhere the possibility to recover at all. Well, it's about it's about two and a half years since I've seen Adam Andre climb. I've got to admit, he's actually managed to control his frustration when he comes off because he used to have a real tantrum in the old days, and and he used to really sort of get very, very upset with himself. Now it's a bit of a shrug of the shoulders, and uh, he's obviously uh, a little bit more experienced. But as you say, I think those two boxes, as you see, they, they really took a lot of, uh, of of power out of his out of his shoulders, out of his arms. Yeah, for um, sure. As you can see here, he's physically really tired. Like the shoulders are coming up. Yeah. But I think he did a great job there, and yeah, yeah. we will see what that's going to be in the match for. Well, Sean McCall, the sportsman as ever, congratulates him. Uh, says, well done, you did, you did better than me. <laughs> You're in gold medal position. There are still four climbers to go. And I don't know if we can uh, have a look at the, uh, the leaderboard, actually. That would be quite interesting to see. I'm just waiting for it to update. We are... Uh, um, Actually, uh, just waiting for the results to come. It go, go around the world, up onto the cloud, and uh, down into our computer here. And then we go through. Next athlete up, it's Domen Skofic. And uh, here's, a, here's a new name again, another, another youngster. From but Slovenia. a really strong youngster, <laughs> yes, you have to say. I know him already quite a long time because my first World View Championship, yeah. I've competed there with him and it was really cool it was in that time in Valence and it was a great competition you know it was a huge crowd and yeah there were a lot of people just watching it was awesome yeah. I still remember a long time of competing <laughs> against him of course but he's a really nice guy and yeah. it's pretty cool I wish him best of luck in this route and he has become so strong mainly this year of I course. think he is one of the persons who definitely can achieve a podium and he achieved the podium in Chamonix. He was sixth in Haiyang, third in Chamonix, 14th in Brionson. Um, but of course, you know, this is strange. It's the first time we're seeing guys like yourself, and it's great to see you and your hair and the, the colour on the wall as well. But um, of course, you guys have all been competing with each other on the junior and youth circuit for quite a few years. So yeah, you know each sure. other very, very well. It's like a big climbing family. Yeah. I have to ask about the hair. Have you, have you always had the Mohican? Have you always had the colour when you competed? No, well, not always the same color. I've always had this haircut. Yeah. But I didn't always have this hair color. It's just like always changing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, today. I'm, I'm always giving <laughs> some kind of surprise. <laughs> well, it's good to see. Well, uh, maybe the German flag one day as well on uh, world championships. And stuff. Oh, who knows that? <laughs> it's, uh, it's good to see. And uh, it's good to have a bit of color on the wall for sure. Uh, Domen is uh, just moving. Uh, Moving up, we're just waiting. Uh, 
still waiting for Andre's results to come through, so we'll uh, we'll just give it a second. But uh, Stoppage. looking quite comfortable so far. Yeah, I think on the triangles it was a little bit uncomfortable for him, but he went over two very good. Like a lot, a lot of people, um, you know, watching at home, like, uh, you know, the, the, some of these early ones are a little bit boring, and people don't fall off. Although, having said that, we saw Kasolfi go earlier. But yeah. um, you know, the, the the thing is, that, you know, this area, and, and he's stretching hard for that one. You know, this 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 is where some of the strength gets sapped, isn't it? This is where you 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 know the, the hurt starts accumulating, and you know you you you're working hard. Is Kasolfi going for the dino? Easily done. Yeah, very easy. But already you see he's just having a little break with his arms here, so he's got a little bit of acid in there and he's just trying to Yeah, for sure. That. I think this actually I think the start is harder than it looked like at the beginning. All the route is pretty hard and mainly because you are not able to relax in anywhere apart of this position. Yeah. It just goes all the time. It starts getting harder and harder fr from the beginning until the top. Well, Domin's having a good old rest here. Having done the dyno, he's decided he's going to take this as a, as, a, as a good resting spot. As you can see, there's a really good crowd here of, uh, watching this. They're, um, they're taking positions. Uh, we have had some quite heavy rain earlier on this afternoon, so some of the grassy areas are quite damp, and people are only sitting there if they've got something to actually sit on, a good coat or something. So um, we are seeing some gaps in the grassy area, but people are sort of uh, crowding up in the, in the concrete areas. Um, and we didn't see the, the no arms from Andre, did we? We, we? we forgot to mention it. We didn't yeah, see the... Yeah, that's true. He didn't do it. He, he didn't, didn't do it. No. I'm kind of surprised. But may <laughs> maybe he just didn't want to risk, risk anything in no. this finals Absolutely. in order to be able to just show <laughs> what I'm he's sure, able to do. I'm sure you've seen many people do the showboating and, and actually come a crop of and go down when they were showing off. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, not good to do. Uh, still four minutes to go on the clock. Uh, yes, I was I was asking you about the clock, but basically, once that time is out, you know that that's the time you've got to climb. This yeah, problem, exactly. That's yeah. the time you've got to climb. There are eight minutes in the final route, and if those eight minutes are over, then you've just got to come down. Yeah, that's it. It's finished. So uh, it, 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 I suppose it's good. You know, I suppose that in some stage you get time to stay on the wall for crazy amount of time and have two longer rests and uh yeah for sure but actually in the routes nowadays it's kind of hard to stay too long on the wall mainly in a route like this for example you could stay maybe on the sloper down there yeah longer but it's not so useful because it's anyway right on the start of the route but yeah. further up here the route just doesn't allow to wait too long otherwise you just get pumped waiting Domin, uh, has, uh, he's competed on the senior circuit in 2013, in fact, also competed in 2012, and uh, just uh, he made a final in Atlanta in 2012. So he has been uh, competing on the senior tour for a little while. He's not an absolute new kid on the block. We're going to see a lot more of him. And, uh, and, and it's also great, you know, this is the thing with climbing that you see, you know, a lot of youngsters, we've seen 16 year olds competing, and then we get to see Ramon. Who's 32? Yeah, um, you know he w he won a tournament in 2002. Can you believe? You know? Yeah, it's so crazy. <laughs> it's like when I started climbing, maybe. Yeah, and he was winning World Cups. Uh, you know, in the old days when it was all under the UIAA uh, banner. And, uh, and I think Doma now starts really getting pumped. Starts getting really rough there. Yeah. Super physical, and I think he's just gonna go for oh, plus. Oh my goodness! And he, I think you said you're right. He, he, he sort of almost looks as if he was timing a bit there, because that was a risky move he did, didn't he? He almost didn't settle. Yeah, well, I think he just knew he was not going to stick the next hold anymore, and also he didn't flip yet. And he actually already had to flip from before, but he just, yeah. I think he just looked kind of tired. Yeah. Just looking at a little replay. That's Dino from early on, but this was the move where he went. And, and as you can see here, the long quick throw has not been flipped yet, so. Yeah. That's so and from it? upper he couldn't flip it anymore. No, so he, he actually is that sometimes that happens that you know his brain had gone a little bit and you know he had you know 
he was he, he was going to get penalised there because he hadn't clipped. So that that was his. Even if he made that, he was over. He was yeah, finished. for sure. And I think he knew that. And but I think the problem was that already before he was quite pumped actually. And sometimes when you are pumped, you don't feel so comfortable to clip a quick draw, and you just climb further. And then you realize, okay, maybe I could have clipped before, but now it's too late. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Adams just told him uh, where he came off. Uh, Domen said, wow, that's pretty good, well done. And uh, Domen will head off into the night. And uh, nice to see a German, uh, no, a Belgian flag, sorry. Yeah, uh, that's the Belgian uh, flag. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> excuse me, same colors. But um, yeah, and of course we... Uh, we, you know, we've, we've had uh, a, a Belgian athlete who's in the uh, Anak Verhoeven, who's uh, going to be uh, coming up in the women's event a little bit later on. Yeah, she's a really strong young athlete. And she's also medaled here before. Here's Romain de Grange of France. And also uh, one of the older athletes, actually, with a lot of experience and great technical abilities. Yeah. 31 years old, absolutely. It's nice to see some of the old guys yeah. doing so well. And we've got uh, Pope Blanc coming later on as well from uh, saint Colomb in France. And uh, Romain was uh, this silver medalist in Briançon. In fact, he's made finals so far this year. In Hyang, he was in fourth place, Chamonix in fifth. And Briançon during that uh, incredible weather. Were you in Briançon? Yeah, I yeah. was in Briançon. <laughs> and that was quite an experience, wasn't yeah, it? Right yeah, yeah. Briançon was definitely quite an experience. At the beginning of this, in the semi-final, well, in the qualification and semi-final day, it was so hot. It was awful. Like for me, I almost didn't support the heat in my second qualification. I felt really, yeah. really yeah. death, like <laughs> sweating and with a really high pulse. And then at night for semi-finals, I was just so tired. Yeah. And the next day, all over rain. It was all finished. And lightning. Yeah. And yeah, crazy it, was, it, was, it was pretty bad. They, uh, the, the guys did try their best to get it going, but uh, once the big thunderstorms hit, and we, uh, if you've seen the highlights video, you can see there's some incredible footage. Do go onto the IFC YouTube channel. There's a, a brilliant highlights video that's been uh, put up there showing the, the lightning hit, which took the power out for the village. Um, actually caused some quite big damage to our OV truck and uh, the guys here have done an amazing job to, to get the OV truck into some sort of shape uh, as it stayed in Europe between Briansson and this event. Yeah. It is going back to the UK after this event tomorrow to get fixed, thankfully, and uh, we're all ready for the next big event. But it was, uh, and uh, there was a few guys even had ended up in hospital, uh, you know. Yeah, I know. Hotel, so. Some of the judges, I guess. Yeah, I yeah. A few guys who were holding on to metal bits in the hotel that... Uh, uh, got a bit of a shock and uh, needed treatment, so pretty, uh, pretty horrendous time. Remains so far looking very, very cool indeed. I uh, hope he is going to do the jump well. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's that really was a little bit of a risky move, but he just didn't want to jump there at all. No, he didn't run to the dyno. And I, I suppose the dyno is, you know, if you're going to look at it, the dyno is a risky move because you're going into the air and there's a potential that you might not get the grip, even though the, you know, obviously it's a very big hole. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's like uncomfortable. I don't. This dino is not a hard dino actually, but it's really uncomfortable. And in the finals or semi-finals, you are nervous in the competition because yeah. you want to just show your best and you have got big goals to achieve, yeah. and you just don't want to risk too much. So yeah. <laughs> sometimes, mainly mentally, it's like kind of tricky such movements. Yeah. Well, it was interesting because Romain didn't really have much of a rest there. And remember, Domin Scoffage actually took, he must have taken 45 seconds down there. You know, he rested both arms a long time. And maybe, you know, this is this is the theory that, you know, if, if you might be resting, but you're still having to hold. So you're still using up energy. You're still. Yeah, and um, I basically actually think that Domin was resting a little bit too much on this route, mainly on the upper section, on the one that it's now yeah. coming, yeah. in the gray volume. I think he was just spending there a bit too long time, and yeah. I do believe that it got him tired. Yeah. Ben is uh, comfortable at the moment, but he's got a, he's got some interesting uh, action coming up ahead of him. We've had nobody get to the the really top area of the climb yet. This box section and the overhang and the box section. Remember, it's hard to tell. There you go. You can see there's still quite a bit of climbing to go yet. Yeah, there's still quite a lot, quite a lot of movements, <laughs> and mainly such hard movements. Yeah, but that, those boxes are 
are absolutely under, underneath the wall, so they're pointing directly down, and um, you know, they're, they're, you, you've got a hundred percent of gravity working against you there, haven't you? So oh yeah, definitely. They, <laughs> they really are strength sappers. And um, now here he comes. It's, uh, and he's looking still quite good there, actually, fresher than some of the other athletes before. Yeah. I'm curious how he's going to manage the section which is coming now, which is a little bit more powerful. I think that's rather not so much his style because he's having a lot of finger power and great technique, but yeah. he's not such a power-based climber. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, the legs swing out a little bit there. Slightly uncontrolled. But he's still looking pretty good. Yeah. He Covered managed it. to grab it. Covered it well. Great view here from Miss Camber. You can see the next series of climbs that nobody's really got beyond the underhang here, so this is a big move now for Romain de Grange. Currently fourth place. You're going to see that number to the left slightly increase as he just gets through to the next hole. There's and now it starts getting really interesting. I hope he won't hesitate too much there. Nice to see uh, Shauna Coxey. Hi there. You're uh, watching and you posted on IFSC. Hope you're well, Shauna. We'll be seeing you in Munich for the World Bouldering Championships coming up. Uh, not long to go oh now. Oh, no. And I think here he just didn't decide fast enough. He realized it felt really uncomfortable. He got tired. And I think he really just had to decide faster what he was going to do. If he was going to go first with the hands or first with the legs. And, but he hesitated there on really, really bad holds. So I think that cost him doing quite a few movements more. Yeah. Well, he's, he's absolutely sick here. He really, yeah, that, that was the move where his legs swung out. And yeah, we and both did you see the rope? <laughs> like going around his leg. Yeah, yeah. Really uncomfortable. And here's the move where he falls. and. This was a surprise, yeah. He's yeah, he, and he's trying to go there for a knee bar, but it just oh. doesn't get in. Yeah, his knee actually touched his hand. Yeah, his knee kind of pulled out his hand, I think. Yeah, and he's looking at him, he's looking at his knee. <laughs> he's saying, you know, how could you have done that to me? Because it, it was his knee and he <laughs> nudged his hand. So if you're watching this on YouTube, just rewind that little bit of video. You can see it again. His right knee just nudged his hand away. Yeah. And when you're when you're pointing directly down at the ground, there's nothing else gonna. Gravity is gonna win. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, it's lovely to see so many tweets uh, today, and do keep them coming on IFSC, WC. Uh, we uh, also keep an eye on the chat room as well on YouTube, where we're gonna have some very interesting comment, no doubt. Um, and uh, lovely to see, and it's great to see Shauna saying a few words on Twitter. Uh, you know, Shauna's had a fantastic season, and uh, it's probably getting pumped already for uh, the World Championships coming up. Well, we've gone from one of the experienced uh, old guys on the tour to another one, because here is Roman Julian Pablanc of Spain. And, well, this guy is just an absolute, he's a legend of the sport. Isn't yeah, he? definitely. He is really, mainly in competition climbing, he is just, yeah, like a climbing legend, as you said. He's super strong. I don't know many people <laughs> who have such an incredible endurance. I've never seen that actually before. Yeah. And yeah, I think if he doesn't do any mistakes or if he doesn't hesitate too much, then he can do really good on this route. I hope this first part here with this long reach for for the left hold, I hope it won't cause some troubles, but I think he should be able to do it. Yeah. Well, the man has got an incredible history. Um, I'm not going to go through all these gold medals and everything. It's all on the IFSC website. Just have a scan down. This man is being one of the top climbers on the IFSC World Cup series for many years. He's won world championships, he's won European championships. And this season he's actually not medaled yet, which is he's probably, he, he's had probably the worst run. I'm just looking at his last seven events. The best position he's finished is fourth, which is pretty unusual for this man. He's normally a guy who's always on the medal podium. Looking further down, he's, you know, first, second and third, always in there, mainly first, to be honest. And this season he's been sixth, uh, 15th in Haiyang, didn't reach the final even. He was sixth in Chamonix and fourth in Brionson. So, you know, with, with climbers, there is a stage and, you know, there is a debate over what age it is, but, you know, usually people tend to sort of retire in the sort of late 20s. You do get a few climbers who've gone into the 30s, but there is a stage where uh, 
well, you know, you've got many years to go yet, so don't worry yeah, about sure. it, Fred. But uh, I suppose there is a stage where, uh, no matter, you know, you just look at what, you know, Roman is in absolute peak physical strength, isn't he? You know, look at the muscles on their shoulders. He's, uh, uh, you know, this man is, uh, he's, he's definitely not out of shape, is he? No, definitely <laughs> not. Well, he, he's still winning competitions. Well, yeah. this year not yet, but he's still super strong. And I'm really curious how he's going to do in this route because basically this wall should be his style because it's pretty long. You need a lot of physical, mainly endurance. Yeah. So I think it should be his style. I hope he is going to go for the jump and he won't hesitate too much and just don't mistake. Yeah. But I think he can do really great in the street. Yeah. And he's, just, he's just clipped. He's come back down a level. And this is one of the things you notice with this man that he does. There's the dyno. Really no good. Ah, yeah. that was really solid. Yeah. But he, you know. So, we have noticed this with the main style and he is very happy to maybe drop drop one back one and have another look at from a different angle yeah, a particular sure. hold and but mainly because he's able to he has got the physical ability i mean the least of the athletes have such yeah. an, a crazy physical ability to go back and forward wait a minute again yeah just if it feels a bit uncomfortable crimp a little bit more to hold and keep going well yeah. but that's ramon yeah, absolutely. And uh, the international feel of this sport as well is, is just, uh, you know, quite, quite incredible. Just looking at this men's list, um, we've got two French athletes, but then all the other athletes are from different countries. So six, uh, seven countries feature in the top eight. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things, we, you know, when talking about the Olympics, and, and you know, there is, it is not a sport that's dominated by one or two countries. If you, do get a, a lot of countries and German climbing in particular is you know we're seeing a lot of good German climbers coming through and you know we've seen it with Juliana Verb and yeah for um, sure mainly in bouldering yes in bouldering especially so you're quite unusual as a lead climber is it yeah do you not do the bouldering well no actually not I'm uh, I'm a true lead climber yeah. but basically I have to confess that my maximal power is like really good I'm really strong in my maximal power. Actually, I'm even having more max power than endurance, but bouldering too, it's a very different style of climbing. It's not just yeah. the physical ability, also in a technical way, bouldering is just so different from lead. And in general, I would say lead climb is rather the physical kind of discipline than bouldering. Bouldering yeah. has got a lot more technical and a yeah, well, you need a lot more technical skills, specific yeah. ones, than lead climbing. Yeah, absolutely. But well, for me, I'm a, I'm a true You're a true lead, lead climber. climber. Yeah, yeah, great to see. Well, some people, of course, do both, and some people switch between one and the other, but, uh, yeah, um, there you see, this is the, so he's just on to get into the area where the scoring has been uh, shown. You can see uh, the call currently in second place. Also, it's a very different way of competing because in lead climbing, for example, in final lead, you just need to put you put, need to put all your mental and physical energy on one go. Yeah. And on this go, everything just should be perfect if possible. But for bouldering, you've got like in a final round four different boulders, and you have to be on 100% for about four minutes, and then you have to slow down all your energy again, all your mental abilities, your concentration, and then right put it up in the right moment again. And this is kind of hard for me. Yeah. Well, uh, any questions for Sebastian Halenki here, who's, uh, who's with me today doing the commentary? You're doing a fantastic job. You're, it's great. I prefer, not to, I prefer people to listen to people like you speak because you know what you're talking about. Oh, thank about. you. <laughs> and, uh, it's great to have you here tonight with us. But uh, any questions, do uh, pop them on to uh, the uh, hashtag IFSCWC. I do notice that YouTube seems to be doing pretty manic with all the comments as well. So, Oh, no. oh my goodness. Oh. What happened there? And that was, uh, he did want well to defend himself there. My goodness, what happened, Seb? Oh, I just saw, like, he was trying to, I think, pinch this underfling in order to be able to, to go to the next hold a little bit more. I don't know, static actually. 
yeah. but then his foot slipped and he just came off the wall. Well, there's the dino, the which uh, our replay person seems to like. But yeah, so Ramon gets to the first part. I've just done a little watch here. But here we go. This is the replay. What happened? Yeah, it just, oh, like no. I said, his foot really slipped, unfortunately. Yeah. It was really unnecessary. He could have planned a lot further there. Oh. Well, you really think that... Uh, well, Vermont, it's just, <laughs> look, we, yeah, what, what can I do? Uh, Vermont doesn't speak great English, so uh, he's, um, the, it'd be a very stilted conversation between Adam and Vermont here, but uh, he's just asking Adam, where did he get to? And uh, it just goes to show the great Vermont Julian Podglank here, how all the experience behind him can still make a mistake. Yeah, for sure. I mean, those things are the things that can happen to everybody, and it's, really a pity actually because he was looking really strong until that point and he did even even moves that are normally not his style he did them really solid yeah so it's really a pity but yeah those things can happen and let's hope that the world championship is going to go better mm -hmm. absolutely and his home country of spain jakob schubert the last athlete up and the big hope for austria now absolutely 23 years old from innsbruck this is his local event, and he's already taken a gold, a silver, and a bronze. He's uh, he's been as good as anybody out there in the lead World Cup so far this season. And look at him; he looks. Oh, that's a pretty pumped face, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. Well, he's really psyched to show what he yep. can. He is a very competitive person, yep. and I believe that if he doesn't do any mistake or something, he's got a really good chance to win here. He, yesterday in semi-finals, he was looking exceptionally solid he was yeah it was like the best goal from all of them he were, on top he was still looking so fresh so i think he has got great chances just to win this competition here just get the gra uh, graphic will be on the screen in a second but we're just uh looking and jacob has actually topped all the routes so far he's the only one of two people to have topped the semi-final and he was the only person to top Route 2 in qualification, which looked like quite a tough one. I didn't look at Route 2 uh, in qualification. But oh yeah, uh, Route 2 was a pretty hard one, like quite physical and having quite a few uncomfortable movements. Yeah. But you know, actually also Stefano. Oh, I just so noticed, yes, yeah, Stefano got yeah. himself, he uh, topped Route 2 as well. But uh, only both of them, But he, uh, nobody else. Yeah, he was, he was quite down on uh, Route 1, so, uh, but uh, yeah, Jakob has been the only one in the whole event who's actually topped everything so far and uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how he manages here now he'll have had a look across and seen that Adam Ondra has sat in the hot seat so that will have given him some motivation that uh, he wants to beat up beat Ondra here yeah um, sure but uh, you know do you, do you think he'll know where he needs to try and get to do you, you know obviously he knows he's got to get pretty high but do you do you think that he'll be aware that it's this box area that's caused all the problems I'm not really sure about that. I think it's pretty hard to know it's so specific where you have to climb to. Yeah. And mainly if the climber who just climbed before you wasn't the one who has the highest score. Yeah. You know, because if it's the one who has the highest score, you can maybe see it on the quick draws. Yeah. yeah. But if not, then you no. just cannot realize it's so good. But what he probably would does know is that nobody's yet top. Because yeah. otherwise you hear the big applause and the big cheer. For sure he knows yeah. that. And, and you, now, you always hear the ooh when people come off. Yeah, you? definitely. Yeah. You always realize when yeah. people are topping. Yeah. And this is a really hard a hard thing because if you know you have got to top, it's yeah. giving you a lot of mental pressure. So Jakob having a little break here, which is what we saw from Scoffitch earlier on. So he's decided to take a little rest and just have a look up. He's only 15 holds up, so it's very early on. There's only a third of a way up the wall. But also something what we see quite often from Jakob, having like already at the beginning a little break yeah. in order to, I think, just something mental, because definitely on the first parts of the route he doesn't get pumped, but it's just for getting all his concentration together in yeah. order to get completely focused for the next few movements. Yeah. And as you can see here, he is going fluent and solid and... Absolutely, he's pretty fast through that area. Yeah, definitely. No, not a single hesitation there. Still plenty of time to go. 
and I think he has recovered well also from his finger injury. So now I believe he's back. Yeah. Back in shape. Yeah, there seems to be no doubt about that. He's, uh, he's, he's doing he's very well. And of course, one of the climbers who also does a fair bit of bouldering out there as well. So, you know, we've got a true, it's a great view of the uh, hold there. Uh, of course, his, uh, his younger sister was competing in the women's event. She reached through to the semi finals. So, uh, a really great weekend for the Schubert family. Oh, but, he's uh, trying to match this one. That's, that's interesting. But I think it was pretty clever because it didn't waste a lot of power. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's the first time we've seen that there. Yeah, I think it was also definitely not meant to do it this way, but oh, now he is kind of struggling. Yeah, yeah. Wondering, exactly. wondering what just happens there. Yeah, he's gonna have a little clip, but uh, he wasn't happy with his first attempt. Yeah, we're gonna have a little oh. try here. Oh, I think that's a little bit dangerous what he's doing there. It might cause a bit of troubles. <laughs> I hope that didn't waste too much of energy. Yep, and that's the point, isn't it? That you know, if you, if you get yourself into an awkward, you know, do you have, do you find that on the wall when you get yourself into an awkward position like that, and you realise that you've actually wasted a bit of energy that you really should have kept for later? Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. that mainly uh, in lead climbing, that happens quite often because often you just don't find the absolutely perfect way to do it. But yeah, then you just mainly you need to get. Like calm again, yeah. or stay calm actually, and just keep going. But I think now he's already a kind of a bit pumped. Yeah. But I was thinking it's a very crimpy loop. Maybe also he's still struggling a little bit with his finger. Yeah. I'm not so sure about that. Well, here's the box section. I've noticed coming down. Ooh, coming down was saying uh, on the YouTube chat that uh, with Jakob being heavier than Andra. That, uh, Jakob might uh, struggle a little bit in this box section. This is the big move now. And uh, for those of you who missed some of the earlier climbs, let's look at, quickly look at the positions. He's in fifth place here at the moment. But he's so still, still doing good. Oh. There you see. That's where Andre went. Just so Andre just went in his attempt for that little blue hold. It's just at the top of your screen now, so... Oh yeah, oh yeah. I hope he's not going to be mistaken here. Oh, what an awkward position. And... No! Oh, he can't get the knee in! No, that, that's pity. I think his, also his hand just slipped away on that box. Oh my goodness. Jakob Schubert, the crowd are giving him a, a standing ovation. We'll, uh, we'll get the official confirmation of the results where he got to shortly. But oh, his, his knee, he was trying to get his knee in there to, yeah, to he was, lock. He was trying to get his knee inside and then while that, his hand slipped away from the box. Yeah, in fact we can just we can just watch it here and we'll just look, oh yes his hand slipped and on that one. We'll see it here and here. Oh, so he got his hand in an awkward position, his knee was coming in and then when he tried to get his hand up on the side of the box, that yeah, that's really ungrateful, but those things can happen. And it's quite kind of funny because this was the part where the root setter said yeah. it was not going to be too hard, <laughs> it was just for the crowd, but yeah. everybody really struggled there. Well, basically everybody, but Andra fell there. Yeah. Well, there we go. So we never saw the top half of the route actually tested, and uh, but we did get separation. We did get athletes. Uh, but it, it was that underhand section which absolutely finished them off. Schubert ending up with a bronze medal on count back. He uh, got the same score as DeGrange with a 39. McCall getting a 39 plus gets the silver medal. And Adam Ondra, well, we said he would have had a start to the season. He's certainly made up for it because he's got him picked up the goal. Yeah, that's great for him. And I think that was also for his head. I think kind of important thing. Yeah. So, a, a really uh, superb performance there from Adam Andra. And uh, you just feel, you feel a little bit let down, don't you, really? Because you just feel that uh, I'd have liked to have seen what some of the athletes could have done in 44, 45. And yeah, that would be, Which were yeah. awkward areas that, uh -huh. you know, that Paul had set. And we're never going to know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I, 
<laughs> that would be really interesting. It certainly would. I'd, I'd love to just put them in the in the, in the scissor lift and say, here you are, get on to 42 and, uh, and go there. And climb it up. Yeah, <laughs> get, you start at 42 and go on. Show us how it's done. We are in Imst. It's still daylight. The sun has gone down, but it's still absolutely beautiful conditions there. These are some of the medals. They... Uh, they, uh, and they, there's also some advertising in local beers there as well. You notice the big 30 on the wall. Well, uh, Helmut Knabel, who uh, was one of the main organisers, as uh, Adam Andre is just getting a, a big round of applause there, and I think he's going to be interviewed. Let's have a listen. Uh, our interviewer there um, having a chat with Andra. Uh, I will uh, be going up there a little bit later on after the presentations and uh, you'll be hearing some uh, intricate uh, incisive questions Stefano Gasilvi you still feel very sorry for him don't you yeah that's with a that's four. pity but those things happen but that is life and uh, there you go there's official confirmation and here we go with the ladies event so no messing around here uh, we uh, there's, there's no time for rest and uh, now, can you remember what Paul said about the, the women's course? <laughs> um, we, uh, he did speak earlier on. You can rewind on YouTube if you want to hear what Paul said. And I'm sure uh, that as, the, as the women go up uh, the course, it's going to remind you what he said. So we'll, uh, we'll go there. Here's uh, Risa Ota of Japan. Um, she, uh, she's just having a little good look at the course here. So I do like it this way, actually. Um, when you get all of the men competing and then all of the women. Sometimes you have men, women, men, women, and you sort of lose focus about the Yeah, the, yeah the, that's the true. It's um, nicer one first one category and then the other one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, better. I really do like it this way. Um, so here is uh, Risa Ota uh, from Japan. The women's category, pretty much similar to the men's actually. We have two Austrians and then everybody else is from a different country. Japan, Russia, Belgium, USA, Austria, Slovenia, and Korea. It's a massive spread of countries, isn't it? Yeah, we've definitely. We've got the whole world covered here. Yeah, well, climbing is a really, really international sport. Absolutely. She's 21 years old from Yamaguchi in Japan. And she's competed in all the World Cups so far this year. She uh, She's one of these that does a little bit of... Uh, she actually does a bit of speed in the spare time, it seems. Although... Uh, I think she may be just trying to pick up points for her overall World Cup ranking. She was 9th in Haiyang, 8th in Chamonix, and 13th in Grand So she's going to at least match her best position so far at, uh, at this event. And uh, Imst is a fairly local one for you. Where, where are you based in Germany? Well, I'm based rather in the southern part of Germany. Like The name where I'm living is Gingen. But nobody knows that. It's no. close to Ulm, if okay. you have heard about it. Yeah. And this is like basically in the middle between Stuttgart and Munich, more or less. Okay, cool. So, yeah, rather in the southern part. Yeah. So, Imst is, I Imst is pretty close. Imst pretty is pretty close. As far as lead climbing is concerned, this is your home, home event almost. Yeah, actually. <laughs> and I'm quite frequent here and in Innsbruck. And because in Innsbruck there is also another very good training gym. So, yeah. I'm quite often at weekends here or yeah. in Innsbruck. Cool. Well, this is... Uh, the, the, the climbers do love coming to Innsbruck. It's been, uh, we, we had a great interview with Helmut Knabel a little bit early on. We will be loading that up to our YouTube uh, channel uh, a little bit later. And uh, we, did, we did quite an in-depth interview with him as well, which um, we'll, we'll go into about his career and his life and, and why he built this wall. and. Uh, and there's a man who's been involved in climbing since he was very, very young. Uh, got involved in it through school because the climbing is one of the school subjects. And uh, he's, he's taught it, he's, he's organised it, and he's vice president of 
the IFSC and uh, you know Helmut is a real um, you know a real star in, in, in climbing you know for his outdoor ability as well for you know, he's, he's climbed in Norway and countries around the world yeah for sure he's a, a, lo a really lovely guy and uh, it's always a pleasure to come to him it's uh, certainly one of the, the favorite venues for, for the lead climbers to come to a real climbing community here at least so far just having a a little rest? Yeah, I think this route is mainly a really endurance-based route. A little bit, yeah, as Paul did it said, it's kind of the same style as our semi-finals yesterday. It's really, really, really long. I do believe that the single movements are not too hard. Maybe on the upper section for sure, like the last 10 movements. But on the lower part, I think the movements are not too hard. It's just like very long, in this lap it's a little bit tricky, a little bit technique, but just not too hard basically, but pumpy by the time. If you climb movement and movement and movement more, it's just tires after a while. Yeah. Well, here we go. This is, uh, this is our first look at uh, the women's route actually being attempted. And, uh, yeah, I think Paul did say that this, this one, that, that area could be a little bit awkward. Um, there's some heavy stuff to come and I think I, I remember he said that the finish was pretty tough on this oh one. yeah if he it, said if people get to the top they're gonna have real trouble yeah for sure there's one really hard under cross movement to a pocket yeah. and yeah something like that mainly on the top part of the wall it's pretty hard yeah it's very powerful and there's also an area where he believes that if the, the, the ladies do it the way that is planned, that they'll actually end up turning themselves around and facing outwards towards the crowd, which should be quite interesting to see. Yeah, for sure. That's quite a show for your people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lisa Ota. Still looking quite good here. Taking a little rest. Yeah. Well, she's just having a, taking a bit of time here on this one. She's... Um, she... Uh, Topped in qualification one, she was uh, reached point 29. Qualification two, and she was a 46 plus. She beat Helen Janicott by one hold. Very similar to your situation. Yeah, oh yes. You finished on the bubble, and Helen is uh, exactly the same situation as well. Kind of same, night. yeah. <laughs> well, I was talking with uh, Michaela, uh, uh, one of the uh, female climbers from the USA, and you know. Do you go to bed sometimes at night having, you know, really sort of frustrated and you, you can't sleep because you're you're going through that problem over and over again? As to how you yeah, I, I really know this kind of problem, mainly if you were just so close, for example, for getting to finals or maybe, for example, if you really wanted to win a competition and you were just so close to win it but you just didn't win. Yeah. And it was just like un... un necessary to yeah. fall there yeah. then it's really sometimes turning circles in your head but <laughs> yeah I think it's important just to let it go to release your mind and just carry on and face the next goals that's what Just had a comment here uh, from uh, one of our guys who's out there that Jakob Schubert uh, just said that that route was way too complicated for him and um, <laughs> so, uh, well, he's going to be picking up a bronze medal. We'll be talking to, I'll be asking him about that a little bit later on. Um, we've got a, a few people who'll be uh, going out and gra grabbing the guys, making sure they don't head off into the Imst evenings. I don't know what Imst is like on a Saturday night. Um, but uh, Risa Ota here, so far, you know, she's she's. This is an awkward area now, isn't it? This yeah, is, I this. think. And also the movements before, as you could see, she was kind of struggling with them, but she still managed to stick this yeah. big. Oh, oh, there you go. She never got settled there, did she? It, how often do you see that with climbing? That she, she didn't get herself settled. She wasn't comfortable. She felt, well, I better try and make a move because I'm going to be coming up anyway. Yeah, well, that's something quite common, actually often when yeah. people just don't feel comfortable in the place anymore and they're already quite pumped they just go for the next move but don't put full effort in it yeah. but i think that's also something it depends of the climber of the type for example jakob that never happens to him yeah. he always like goes with 100 percent and i think it's mainly a mental thing yeah 
here we see again. She just never settles here, does she? And then, now that's quite a that's quite a big hold, though, actually. So yeah, she, you know, she. I think it was a fair risk for her to take because that was quite a good hold. Yeah, well, I think he, she just grabbed it a little bit in the wrong way. She could have even stick it in this way, but she just grabbed it a little bit too much on the left, I believe. Yeah. So Risa Otter is. Uh, comes away with, uh, I think, uh, was that a 36 or a 38, I'm told uh, by my director. And we just wait for the next athlete to come. Evgenia Malamid of Russia. Is, uh, there's a little beautiful sun sunset there. So uh, Evgenia, 27 years old. And has been climbing a fair bit of time, obviously. Um, yeah, all time. Quite a lot of experience already. A lot of good experience. She's uh, she's not had a good 2014. I, you know, I think we've um, this season in particular with the lead climbing, we've really seen some youngsters, you know, sort of smash into the into the scene and yeah, and sure. actually pick up some medals. And, and so some of athletes, and and her name is one of them. You know, Yevgenia has reached many finals over her career um, and taken medals. I'm just looking at uh, you know she she uh, she's third at the Rockmaster and. She's, you know, further back, but in, in this 2014, she's actually finished 12th, 14th and 17th. So this is her first final in 2014. And, um, you know, see what you're doing to these guys. You know, you, you, you youngsters are coming in and you're knocking these guys down. But, uh, yeah, I know, you know there's fresh blood coming in all the time. But, well, that's the way it goes, you it know. It is, absolutely. That's life. And Yevgenia was coming in when she was 10 years ago when she was, I think she was knocking a few guys down, so... You know, she's got a bit of a challenge on now, and this is her first final for 2014 for her to try and uh, make something of it. Yeah, so hopefully she's going to have a really good go here and show her best what she can. Yeah, she was one of the athletes, uh, only eight athletes, uh, in fact, sorry, uh, nine, ten athletes uh, topped route one. Um, she, uh, she finished on hold 29 in... Uh, qualification two and she was another one with a 46 plus so she was just one hold ahead also of Helen Yannikot just failed to qualify yeah it's always hard when you're in ninth position and just yeah. not <laughs> getting into finals it's like a really rough thing because you really obviously you always want to get into finals mainly if you know you have got these possibilities you are physically able to do it yeah and yeah, then it's kind of really hard. And for her, it was definitely this this position. And yeah, for me yesterday as well, I was like yeah. going to be able to, but it just yeah. wasn't enough. Are there certain routes that you look at? Uh, you know, as, as, as Eugenia is is quite early on in his climb. You know, do you, when you're looking at a route, do you do you, are there particular types of route that you would prefer? You know, will some climbers look for certain types of routes, and would you look for one that requires more power? Yeah, for sure. For me, it's like I definitely love rather short routes. Yeah. Actually, here those routes are not so much my style because the wall is really, really long. Yeah. I definitely prefer routes with maybe 30 movements. That's quite enough for me, but they can be super hard. They, yeah. I don't care about extremely hard moves. They don't get me too tired, actually. But what really gets me tired when they're too many crimps in a row and if there are just too many movements so yeah. I definitely like it short and powerful short, <laughs> short and powerful yeah okay and Evgenia having uh, no trouble here at the moment just uh, just taking a little breather uh, we are keeping an eye on Twitter and Facebook although uh, Twitter is obviously easier and uh, nice to see uh, so many people commenting it's uh, it, it was a little bit quiet yesterday I was quite shocked but uh, today much more busier uh, there's a good few thousand of you watching. I know some people uh, come in and watch the men and, and then disappear, and then some people come in and watch the women. And of course, a lot of you will be watching on demand over the next few days as well. So uh, great to see uh, so many of you on there, and uh, nice to see uh, a lot of good comments on the chat as well. So uh, a lot of people uh, discussing the plans as they're going on. Yevgenia, still got a, a little way to go before we, uh, we see. Uh, uh, getting towards Risa Alter's area, but um, Risa really had, um, you know, sometimes in lead climb we talk about a, a natural finish when, you know, you could see that they were struggling beforehand. You obviously the tiredness yeah. were getting there, and 
you know, you know that you weren't going to go any further anyway. So yeah. to be honest, that was the place that you should have gone. Yeah. And then there's the frustration when you actually go early and you and you make a mistake. Yeah. And you you know you had more power in you for another ten moves at least. And 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 so that's that's one of the things, isn't it? That, you know, when we're watching here, that uh, you know, Yevgenia, you can see that she's still very much in control. Yeah, for sure. She's not in any trouble whatsoever. Here is the route. Uh, you can see, uh, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of a an awkward area there. That's the area that we caught Risa Otter out for sure, and um, and it sort of turns back on itself and then gets a little bit more difficult. Yeah, right definitely. Here she is still quite comfortable, but I think the next few movements might be getting a little bit hard for her because also Risa Otter was struggling there a little bit. Yeah. Ah, now starting to get pumped, I think. Let's see if she's gonna be able to pull over this. Deciding not to put the heel hook up. Oh, and she just can't pull there. Yeah, I think this is kind of hard to pull from this kind of a little bit blocky position because it seems for me that the left hold is not too good. And you have to put up your right foot pretty high. And then the next move you need to do it like kind of static because you can't do it fast or dynamic otherwise you would probably drop off the wall yep she was definitely struggling now at that point and the foot just slipped away and uh, you know you with Lee climbing like the you know the big thing we've said before with bouldering you know you can make a mistake have a have, have a, a difficult problem and um, you know and, and and you know and then you then you're gone uh, you know you, you can make up for it in, in another problem Interesting to know, these two don't seem to be talking much. Uh, no. But I suppose Risa Otter doesn't really speak a lot of English, so... Yeah, probably. And also, I think she's still quite a young athlete, actually. Yeah. So, maybe it's, like, kind of exciting for her. Yeah. A little bit nervous. She's probably a little bit nervous, yeah. She's, Because, uh, you know, you are sat in the hot seat and everybody's looking at you. <laughs> she possibly doesn't really want to be there, but... Uh, there you go. But, uh, yeah, she certainly wasn't... Uh, there wasn't any discussion there. And, uh, I'm sure Risa Otter... Uh, here's the score so far, those are the two scores. So Otter making up with a 39 plus, Mala made a 32 plus, so uh, I was surprised, I think Mala would do better there. Yeah, I thought the same, but yeah, sometimes there are just some unexpected movements that suddenly bring you out and you're finding yourself earlier hanging on the rope as you believe. Yeah. Um, and just, uh, I'll just notice on the YouTube uh, chat, yes, Momoka, Oda, Dinara, Fakhri, Dinova also uh, they both had real troubles with the uh, the, the two yellow upside down boxes, which was in the men's final a little bit earlier on. Um, they uh, both uh, they both had to uh, depart and they didn't even make the final. So here we go with Anak Verhoeven and one of the young athletes we were talking about a little earlier. Who's yeah, and she became just so strong this year. Already last year she showed in quite a few competitions that she had a lot of potential, that she has got a lot of potential, but mainly this year she has really proved it already in several competitions yeah. that she is able to do really well the podium. And I think this route should be actually quite her style, mainly because she's training usually in Purs, another competition yeah. wall that is super high yeah. and very endurance based. So that should be kind of her style. And I believe if she doesn't do any mistake, She's going to achieve here a great wrestling. Well, just looking at her, her history and competition climbing, and she started off with uh, Youth B, of course, and took a silver, bronze, silver. Then she finished in sixth. And then she had a run of, I think it's 11 events in a row, where she won a gold. And so for the rest of 2010 and the whole of 2011, then for quite a lot of 2012, she just took gold after gold. Then she started competing with uh, the, the, the grown-ups, with the seniors. She, her first event was in purse at her home place. She finished 15th there. But um, as you said, she's still competing in junior level. She took golds this year in Imst on this exact wall in the European Youth Cup. Yeah, also I've seen in, her there. In Edinburgh, she, uh, she took gold as well in the uh, European Youth Championships. And then in the senior category, she's uh, she's been excellent again with a bronze, a, fourth, a bronze in Haiyang, a fourth place in Chamonix, and a bronze medal in Bjornsson. So uh, this is a real name for the future, isn't it? She, this is yeah, a real definitely. rising star. Definitely, definitely, she's a real rising star, and 
her whole future is ahead of her and she's already super strong so I believe we are going to see a lot from her in the future. Yeah, we've, uh, we don't see many good cars from Belgium. Of course, there's Chloe Clo Graffio, who unfortunately you know, died, died in a tragic accident uh, a few oh, yeah. years ago. And, uh, you know, it's a very, very sad story. Um, and, and this is a, the first female climber to come out since Chloe. And she really is going to be a, a big name. It's, uh, it's, it's great to see. just been told by one of the uh, more elderly uh, people around the scene here that uh, there's a, a, a lady called Muriel Sarkany who won the World Championships in 99 and many World Cups uh, in that early 2000 era. Thank you, Mr. Alderson, for that little comment. It's, uh, it's, always, good. it's always good to have a statter in the corner, isn't it? He knows what's going on. So, me and uh, Sebastian are far too young for that sort of stuff. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So uh, Anak now coming towards an interesting point. So this is uh, uh, now this is more traditional league. You know the men's had a few little awkward areas earlier on. Yeah. The, the ladies, you know, there's a few areas where it takes some strength out, but there's nothing of particular interest. No, there? it's more like just endurance based. Yeah. I believe it's like a big fitness test this route, and <laughs> just <laughs> at the end it starts getting really tricky and interesting. Yeah. But yeah, yeah as you can see. She has got a lot, lot of physical resistance, so so far she's just looking pretty relaxed, and I think yeah. also this little bit uncomfortable section is not going to make her struggle a lot. Yeah. Well, Anna has already just moved ahead of Yegenia Malamid. And you see, Malamid stopped at 32 plus. I do love this graphic. I, I believe it on all the time, but uh, it's nice to see what the times are doing as well. And there she see a. a now this is the area where we uh, saw problems for Ota, so... And, and she's I still looking so relaxed here, as you can see, she's just shaking out, still has the ability to wait, to watch out a little bit what she's going to do. So here you can see this kind of physical difference between them. So I hope now she's not going to do any mistake here. Yep. I think it's kind of uncomfortable. Oh, really good solution with this kind of knee bar. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, really across. beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And I think we are going to see her maybe shaking here a little bit. Yeah. Then she's going to take the option. Oh, she's going backwards. She's going to have a little look. So this is a perfect example. You know, Lisa Otter, that she came to a natural end here. She'd run out of energy and she yeah. was gone. But Anna has still got plenty to give. And yeah, she's still so strong here. She doesn't look actually pumped at all. Yeah. Taking her time to rest order to be fresh and full of steam for those next upcoming probably quite harder movements. Yep, it's still it's still a world of pain here from uh, what Paul said on his setting. These ladies are not getting let off. They've, they've gone through this area. Alec Verhoeven's in currently in gold medal position. Beautiful, beautiful little uh, close-up there of that particular hold. I should show that. That's, that's quite out painful now. there because it's unnaturally wide, isn't it? And I think, yeah, now it starts getting hard. I hope she's going to go for it. Yeah. Not too slow. And there we go. Big ah. jump. I think if she had gone just on the first try yeah. that she started moving, she would have still get to stick it. But yeah. there was a little hesitation here. I think she just didn't want to fall there. Yeah. No, you just felt that she was struggling. I think that, you know, that, that particular hold as well, her hand was much wider than it, you know, she, she wasn't able to really sort of get a good grip of it and, and you know, it was taking a lot out of her. And uh, she's shaking her head a little bit, but she's in, she's in the, there you go, there's that hold, you know, it's just a fun hold, isn't it, that's keeping her up. And yeah, for sure. And I think this is like a position where you really have to move forward fast, fast. otherwise you just yeah. lose your energy and you cannot do you cannot really go for the movement anymore. Yeah. 
And there you can see her hand also just slipped away. I think maybe without this hand slip, she still could have reached Mesh. Mesh the next reached it, yeah. 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 But well, those things can happen. And also good effort too. Okay, well, Lisa Otter just explaining uh, using the international language of climbing. Yeah, uh, that's, that's for sure, the international climbing language. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I did, this is where I fell. Um, I was going to mention earlier on, that 30 up there, I, I didn't finish the sentence, but uh, Helmut's uh, son, who's called Andy, had his 30th birthday, and uh, he apparently threw his 30th birthday because he wanted some holes, and uh, so they decided to put them up the wall, and they've told him that he's got to go and get them. Uh, but he, you can't get the crane up in that area, it's at the top of the speed climbing. Uh, so he's got an expedition up there to go and collect his hold. Now, uh, here comes our next climber. Yeah, not that small child. <laughs> it's uh, Delaney Miller. And uh, the United States, uh, you know, we've seen a range of good climbs coming out of the USA of, uh, of late. And we've yeah, seen it mainly in bouldering. Yeah, yeah, the ladies climbing have really, have, uh, you know, really stepped up to the plate to use an mechanism there as well. And Delaney herself. We remember Mascarenas in Vail doing that superbly. A range of Americans qualifying for the final in Vail in the bouldering. And here is Delaney Miller mixing it in with the, the big girls. And let's see what she's got to offer. We, uh, we had a roommate in commentary, Michaela, who was uh, giving us a little bit of a, uh, an account and saying that it was going to be a shame because she'd have an early night last night. And hopefully she's, uh, she's, she's up for this one. So no problems here for Delaney so far. And as you can see also here, the athletes, they're having many different styles of climbing. For example, her, she's very, very slow and static. And every single movement is super precise, but very, very slow. Yeah. And I think this route should be also quite her style, actually, because it's pretty endurance-based. But I'm hoping that mainly on the little bit more risky move, there, for example, on the roof where Risa Otta fell, that this is not going to cause her too much troubles because there you just kind of need to go for it. Yeah. Just being told from. Uh, our stato in the corner that uh, she's the only athlete in the whole competition to have actually timed out here in, uh, in one of her qualification routes. So that just goes to say that she's yeah. one of the slowest just out there. Just like I said. Yeah. Risa Otto actually, uh, she was, uh, she, she when she came off, she only had a minute left. So she climbed uh, also fairly slowly herself. So she was never going to be getting close to the top even if she did carry on. Um, Delaney, Miller, 90, De Delaney Miller, 19 years old, um, in, from Frisco, and of course, you know, for the Americans, it's it's hard, you know, just as we've seen with a lot of Asians. So, it's it's hard to be travelling to so many of the events in Europe. Like, you're great. You live in Germany. You're in the middle of it all. You can fly all. Yeah, but true. <laughs> but well, uh, for us, the Asian competitions are kind of a hard yeah. time because <laughs> you're all the time travelling and travelling and travelling. Yeah. And for us, it's like, yeah, everything like kind of uncommon there yeah. but it's a really cool experience i guess i mean for me this year is going to be the first year ever that yeah. i will be able to go to asia and i'm so much looking forward for that fantastic but and the asia tour in october you know three weeks in asia what, what, what are you gonna what what are you gonna do in between 
the, the, the events. Do you get, get a chance to climb at all? Yeah, for sure. I will I will train in between. Like, for example, we're going to stay for sure in Korea yeah. after the World Cup. And I don't know, I'm not going to travel home in between because no. they're Both just... Not. Far too yeah. expensive. It's far too expensive, and also with the jet lag, jet lag you never could no, deal with no. that. But will you manage to find a local gym where you can do a bit of climbing? And yeah, for sure. Well, we are still kind of searching and organizing, but definitely we have already got some places yeah. to go. For example, also in Japan, the great climbing gym from Yuji yeah. Hirayama. Great stuff. Yeah, there, there are a lot of possibilities. Yeah, well, I hope we, uh, you know, we're, we're in the same boat, so... Hopefully we'll, uh, we're going to uh, get out and do a little bit of food and we'll have a in the, in the local area. So Delaney now starting to come towards uh, what, what we can call the business end of the climb now. Um, yeah. She's you know she's obviously used a little bit of energy, but now she's going to come into this little um, uh, it's a chicane area, I suppose, for want of a better word. She's going to go left and then right. Uh, oh, I, my I, goodness. That's exactly what I said. Like... When it starts getting into the roof with the little bit risky moves, I was hoping that she wouldn't struggle with that, but that's exactly what happened because she's climbing pretty slow and static and there you kind of yeah. really need to go for it and stick it in the first try because you cannot climb those moves yeah. up and down. So she used a little bit too much energy earlier on. You see she's uh, breathing quite heavily. Uh, one of the things uh, I'd like to show you on the screen is the events that we've got coming up. Uh, it's, a, it's a busy old time on the IFC uh, World, World Cup Series, and these are actually all the events. We were talking about the Asia Tour. Well, there you go. Um, you're you're going to be uh, in uh, Mokpo, Korea uh, in, uh, on the 12th of October. We'll be bringing the finals live in uh, Wujiang, China on 19th of October inside Japan. And, of course, finishing with Kanya in Slovenia, which is the traditional uh, final event uh, of the series. Yeah, always an awesome competition there. Uh, the World Youth Championships, of course, that's uh, an event that you've uh, competed at not so recently, but, uh, you know, fairly recently. And, um, you know, that's an event, you know, what's that experience like going over there and competing in the World Youth? Yeah, well, it's like the World Youth Championships are always something really special. I mean, for me, this year is the first year that I'm going to do almost all of the lead World Cups. But before, when I did mostly youth, that was like the most, most important competition for me. And I was always so psyched going to the World Youth Championships. And actually, that's true. I have been already in Asia and Singapore yeah. in 2012 there uh, for the World Youth Championships. And there I actually also took the first place, so I should remember that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, and I should know that really, shouldn't I? <laughs> So you're the, you're the reigning World Youth Champion? Yes. Yes, cool. Oh, that's Singapore, was it? Si Singapore. Oh, sorry. Okay. Singapore. Yeah, well, that was yeah, just just beforehand. So so winning a World Youth event, pretty 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 nice feeling, huh? Yeah, On top definitely. of the world. Definitely. I mean, that's like, that's the reason why you're doing competitions, because you want to stand on top, and it's like yeah. giving so much motivation and energy to keep training. And for me, I still remember like my first big event in Valence, yeah. that was where I was competing, as I said before, against Stommel, and there he was second and I was first, and <laughs> it's like, you never forget those moments, no, for sure. you never, yeah, yeah, you put one over him on bed, so he, yeah, I'm sure you keep reminding him about that from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> so who's uh, Jessica Pills of uh, Austria, uh, another youngster, 17 years old, from Haag, and... Uh, She's, uh, she's still competing in the uh, European Youth Cup. In fact, her last event, just uh, a few weeks ago, she was in uh, uh, L'Argentière in France, where she finished in eighth place in the boulders. So she likes doing some of the bouldering on the, on the youth circuit. Um, but uh, she's competing in the lead with, uh, with the seniors. Not actually made a final yet. She, uh, she didn't go to Haiyang. As, as many people don't, of course, it's a, it's a big long trip over there. But she did compete in Chamonix, finishing 10, and Brionce on 19. So this is her first final this season. In fact, uh, at senior level, she made a final here last year. Yeah. In Ims, she finished seventh. Yeah, it was also pretty strong. I still remember that. I think for sure it's quite exciting for her, yeah. being in finals second time in front of her home crowd. Yeah. Her first ever event uh, was IMSS 2012, where she finished in 21st. 
So this is obviously a local uh, event for her. Yeah, for sure. So uh, yeah, she's climbing a little bit quicker, isn't she, uh, than Delaney? Like, yeah, for sure. She is no like not too slow climbing, actually. Like, it's going really well forward there. Yeah. We are live here in Imst. It's just gone one minute past nine o'clock. I do hope you're enjoying the action here. Great to see so many people on the chat as well. Nice to see uh, Jeremy Kuhlman from uh, Canada, who's uh, watching from uh, over there, and uh, quite a few people uh, putting posts up. And uh, the YouTube chat seems to be uh, pretty hectic as well. So uh, lovely to see you all um, chatting there. I think YouTube chat is probably a, a better place. Uh, for people to actually uh, chat in more in real time, but uh, of course it's the Twitter that uh, we keep an eye on for uh, comments. Um, Urs Stoker says, uh, a really boring female final route in the lower part. I think we have to agree there, to be honest. Um, <laughs> as you've probably noticed, well, we're yes. not commentating too much on some of these lower stuff because uh, it is, uh, as you said, it's more like an endurance race. Yeah, so. it's a really, it's like a long journey, this route. Yeah. Well, just to keep you excited with uh, different stats, this is the highest wall on the circuit, 22 meters. And 14 meters overhang. Tall and 14 meters overhang. Wow, that's some overhang. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you kind of can feel it, you know. When you're <laughs> hanging on the wall, you really feel those 22 <laughs> meters of height and 14 meters overhang. Oh, dear. It's like quite pumpy. Uh, well, if ever it fell over, you could use it for bouldering, I suppose. But yeah, for sure. <laughs> Not 14, a bad idea. 14 meters high is pretty good going. That's another two meters, you could have a speed wall there as well. And Jessica starting to come towards this open area now. She's, uh, she's doing pretty well. We, uh, we didn't go through, uh, when we're looking at the future events coming up, uh, we didn't look at some of the top ones, but of course we do have some world championships coming up in Munich, uh, Gijon in uh, Spain, and of course there's World Youths, uh, which we did mention in Namia in uh, New Caledonia, which is uh, for those of you who don't know, is a, is a, is a French uh, colony, French which colony, is, yeah. which is uh, near. Uh, yeah, you knew the word, and you're German. <laughs> I was uh, searching for the word, but uh, a French colony just uh, uh, down in the South Pacific. Uh, still a still a two-hour flight, I'm told, from Australia. So not close to Australia, but uh, pretty much uh, close to what you're looking at. There's nothing else nearby. There's a uh, like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Well, here we go now. So this is, uh, here we go, we're into the chicane. So Jessica has just gone past where uh, Delaney went. Delaney was failed to make that left-hand reach into this particular hole. And she's yeah. also still looking pretty strong there. As you can Absolutely. see, she's resting there. Absolutely, totally agree. And uh, great to see so many knowledgeable people uh, on the chat rooms as well, on YouTube, etc. Really so clever heel hook there. Yeah, this is an awkward one. This is where Alta went. So Jessica now in second place. Now, sh now she's having a little bit of awkwardness, and now she's. I think now she will try to do what the root setter said with the big turning around, yeah, and facing the crowd eventually. But first of all, she's going to rest here. Yeah, nobody's done that yet, have they? They've all, uh, you know, this is the, the root setter is expecting that they're going to turn around and face the audience. Nobody has actually done that yet. They're, they're all sort of insisting on on facing into the wall. And, and of course, we've you know everybody's had problems. And Alec Verhoeven, who's the only one who's now ahead of Jessica Pills, um, you know, she came off fairly quickly. And, she, and Jessica's having a similar issue now. She's yeah. she's getting a bit tied up. Oh, come on, Jessica! Is she going to turn over? She may well do. She, I think no, I think she's just going to keep straight in yeah. the wall. Yeah, she's exactly. going to straight. And she's done it. She's held there. She's still looking good, now getting quite pumped, but let's see if she finds a solution. Can she do the next movement? Putting the heel hook. Yeah. And oh. now it's getting no. hard. Oh, oh wow, my she goodness. still could stick it. She's and, held it. And if she goes for the plus, she should be. And. Yeah, this is it. Oh! oh. Now, with that, she's ahead of Anna Kurhoven, actually. I, I believe she is. I think with a 44 yeah. plus, that will put her in first place on countback. Um, really we're, strong, we're right? just going to wait for the officials to to actually confirm that. But you're absolutely right, uh, Sebastian. I think that she's done exactly the same as Anna Verhoeven, and that means on countback, Jessica 
will have gold medal. Provided we don't see anything from the next three. And uh, we have three pretty decent climbers coming up, isn't there? Magdalena Rock, Mina Markovic, and Kim Jain. <laughs> They're not bad. <laughs> no, sure. <laughs> and there you go, a bit of a hug. That's lovely to see. Yeah, that's really nice. So here we go. This is. Uh, now she didn't spend as as long on this area as Annette Verhoeven. So yeah, I think she was also already a lot more tired there. But I think that's the reason why she didn't spend so long there because yeah. she knew she didn't have to waste anything anymore. She was like really out of steam, and that's the natural point for her of falling, as you mentioned it before. Yeah. So yeah, she kind of knew. Okay, I haven't got to lose anything anymore. I'm gonna go for a plus. Yeah. And that's what put her in first place. So Jessica Pills comes to her natural end there. There was, uh, you know, she's not going away frustrated. She's uh, she's happy as she came down. Yeah, it's really strong. And uh, I believe that she has. Uh, she's still sitting there having a little chat with Anak Verhoeven, but Anak is is packing her bag. As you see, night time is setting here. Beautiful shot of the moon in the distance. And here comes Magdalena Verk of Austria. And uh, very strong Austrian climber. Has increased a lot of fitness, mainly this year, but mainly she's got now a very good head. And last year I remember she had some kind of hard competitions because she was already very fit, but sometimes she just got to struggle on some weird positions. She kind of got nervous and she just fell. And those things are can be really tiresome in a mental way. But this year she's getting in really good and I think it's her year. She's had a great start to the season. Um, she, 2014 really is her year. You, you actually said it perfectly there, Sebastian, because in her three events so far in Haiyang, Chamonix and Brionson, she's taken a silver medal in every single event. This 20-year-old from Lande in Austria, um, going back on her previous record. Of course, she, she's still very young. She, uh, you know, she started competing. Uh, in fact, Chamonix was her first World Cup in 2010, 2010, and she finished in 37th there. So that was a. Uh, it's always tough when you first start. I, I oh yeah. The same for you. you yeah, know, I can still remember this. For me, <laughs> also my first World Cup was in Chamonix in 2011. Right. And I don't know. I think I was. 35th or something like that. <laughs> At least something with a three. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I still remember that. Yeah. And I was really sucked up there. I was like, oh my god, what's happening here? Yeah. I've won already two World Youth Championships, but I'm going to a World Cup and I'm 30 something. Yeah. What's happening? But you, th this is the thing, isn't it? And, and I suppose from a climbing point of view that, uh, you know, as you say, double World Youth Champion and you come in and then you're suddenly competing with lots of youth champions who from past years and you know you're suddenly part of a much bigger pool and you know, do you find that the climbing problems are much harder yeah do you find a real big step up from oh yeah it's, it's a huge scene? step and mainly in a physical way i mean i would say for me personally often the routes that you have got in finals in a juniors route yeah. could be like qualification for a men's route yeah so yeah. it's a huge difference a huge and difference. Mainly the field, the starting field is so close, like there's so many strong competitors, yeah. it doesn't allow any mistake. You can easily get out of semis even if you do some tiny mistake in qualifications. Yeah. And yeah, it's sometimes kind of hard in getting you to And lead is a, is a cool sport as well because you only have to make one mistake and you're gone. And yeah. so, you know, it's, a, it's hard to learn. And, you know, you think of people who are in their 30s, like Ramon and, and, and uh, you know, Degrange as well, who are, you know, very experienced. They've got so many, so much climbing experience in their head. Yeah, for uh, sure. At this very top level. And, uh, you know, Magdalena here, she's only 20 years old, but she's uh, she really has stepped it up. And there you see the route. There you see where, where we have issues. And as you can see, Pills currently in first place. He's got the gold position. Silver arrow bang on the same. But uh, I think you've got to think that, you know, the three athletes coming up with uh, Magdalena Rock, Mina Markovic and Kim Jae in. Three you know, super strong climbers. I've got to say that, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my neck on the block here. I think we've got gold, silver, bronze still to come. And I think yeah, that uh, yeah, I believe the same. I, I think that uh, you know the athlete in gold medal position at the moment won't actually get a medal. So it's all to all to play for, as they say. 
in, uh, in football terms, and I'm not going to mention football with a German sat next to me. <laughs> <laughs> well oh. done for not mentioning the World Cup. How many World Cups is it that Germany have won this so far this year? Uh, this, is it five or something? Four? You're not a football man, that's good. Yeah, yeah, you're asking me about football. I think that's <laughs> definitely the wrong question to me. Okay. Uh, ask me everything about climbing, but Cl please, nothing about football. I have no idea. That's great to hear. <laughs> that's great to hear. <laughs> I, I, I don't even watch it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I think that makes me feel worse, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, uh, Magdalena, right, here we... Uh, this is the area where uh, Delaney had trouble, but... Um, and as you say, you know, Delaney was, she came to a natural end at this point, but yeah. Magdalena has just completely gone straight through there. Yeah, she's looking still so strong, not pumped at all. Yeah. And this is the area, so this is where we now sit on the edges of our seats. So having had a little chat, and uh, you know, as, as it said on the track earlier, the uh, a little bit, not, not that climbing is ever boring, but uh, certainly not an area where we're ever anticipating somebody to come off. But this was now. This is the area where people have had issues. So this is uh, Risa Otter had problems here. And as you can see here, she is, I think, fresher than all of the other climbers that came to this point because she's still able to relax there and check out even like which holes to take next. So yeah, it's looking really good. Glad you're enjoying the music there. We've got a we've got a pretty uh, ravey DJ in the background who's giving us some good tunes. It's always great having good music in the yeah, background. Yeah, for sure. It? I mean, that's also for a competitor. It's awesome. Yeah. Like, oh, that was that was a really risky room here, but she managed to do it good. Yeah. Now this is an area which has given people. This is the area now. This is this is deciding the medals. You can see it's all about all the holds that are on the screen right now. How is she going to go through this? Now, this is an inter interesting move. I don't think we've seen a progression through so quickly like that. Yeah, it's going really fluent, and she's, she's still looking up. so strong. Look at that. She's resting at the point where the others fell. It's yeah, yeah, impressive. She's, actually, she's actually having a rest there. Oh, my goodness. Really strong. Now she's in the first the place. The are going crazy out there. <laughs> They've probably told her that she's just taken the lead. Oh, that's looking really strong. She's still doing she's so great. Still got more to give. We need to see the wall, Mr. Director. And she's still hanging there. Really strong fight. Yeah. Now, it's still a world of pain. If you remember what Paul DeVille said earlier, it yeah, doesn't get really any high easier. movements there. And oh, oh wow. And she, she she's got, got it. the hold. And oh, oh. ho, ho. Wow, what a strong effort there. It was really a great go. Well, that's what climbing is all about. The crowd are going absolutely crazy here. They have loved it. It's the local girl. This is the top Austrian. And she's come down and she's got the gold medal position that they wanted to see. Now we've got two more climbers to go. but uh, And she had oh. such a great go there. What a great... That move that she did across, though. You know, the areas where we've seen everybody else come down. And she just looked in total control, didn't she? And, yeah, and, and sure. reached across and that was beautiful. Yeah, definitely. She was still so strong and yeah, this movement is so hard. And, you know, actually I believe that this one might be the cross movement where you're yes. kind of facing the crowd, you know? Yeah. I, I think, think it's right. that one. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. That she she didn't want to come out forwards. So she was resisting that, and that, that meant she couldn't get her hand in there to actually, you know, to, to sort of to, to nail it. In the end, well, she's in gold medal, she's smiling. Yeah, I'm sure she's got a good reason to smile there, and yeah. I think our prediction's going to be safe, isn't it? I think we're going to have gold, silver, bronze in these three. My director here was pulling faces at me, thinking that uh, I don't know anything about climbing. Well, I think, I think we've got this one. The sun, the, the sun is well and truly down, the darkness is starting to go. I, there's no. This, this venue is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, sure. It's, it's an absolutely wonderful atmosphere. And here we go. It's Mina Markovic entering the arena. Now, she obviously is aware. She'll have had a little look across and seen that Magdalena Rocky's sat in that winner's chair. Yeah, so, sure. And, and she'll have um, obviously heard the big cheers. Um, but she'll know that Magdalena didn't get to the top, of course. She'll yeah, have definitely. Heard the She'll have realised that uh, you know th this competition is is all there for the winning, 
And uh, Mina, 26 years old, from Maribor, as a very well decorated climber. Really, she's been around a long time. Uh, in the three events this year, she's been fifth in Haiyang. She took the bronze medal in Chamonix. And in Briançon, she was in sixth place. But of course, uh, Briançon, what, an awkward event because, of course, the. Uh, yeah, it was all the decided finals in the semi-finals. Yeah, cancel. that's kind of mean, but yeah. yeah, those things can happen. But uh, you know, the, the athletes all knew in advance that there was a good chance that we were going to have some terrible weather. Yeah, and that the final could well be cancelled. So I suppose uh, at least they were warned in advance to to give their all in the semi-finals, and that's what we saw. Uh, Magdalene, uh, sorry, Mina is one of those athletes who does a bit of bouldering as well. She uh, she uh, reached the final in Baku this year, finishing fifth. She was uh, just on the bubble, just missed outside in Grindelwald in Switzerland, and was 39th in Innsbruck. Didn't have such a good uh, event in Innsbruck, and didn't quite make the semi-final stage. So, uh, Mina, one of those uh, few athletes who does like bouldering and lead, which means that when it comes to the overall World Cup standings, she's usually uh, competing pretty heavily with the rest of them. And then for last year's she, she has won a lot of competitions actually. Yeah. Mainly last year she was battling in all the comps she was. with Giant Kim and it was always like really it was like face to face all the time. And they were almost all the time like right in the same position like yeah, and absolutely. every go every single go was really important even from the qualifications because it was often really coming back to count back for them, and they were just so close. It was really exciting to watch their their race. Actually, it was like a kind of race yeah. between them. I'm just having a look at her record in 2013. She she was set, she won the silver medal in the European Bouldering Championship. So that's not bad going. And then after that, the lead season started. She was second in purse, fourth in term in Russia. She won in Mokpo and Wujiang. She was second place in Valence and third in Kranje. So, as you say, she had an absolutely brilliant 2013. And uh, this year, here she is. She's pretty much... Uh, she's going to be confident of getting a medal, I would imagine. I, I, I feel sure. confident she's, you know, she's got a good chance. There you see, she's still got a long way to go. There's that but little she's climbing pretty fast here and really fluent, like with a yeah. lot of confidence. I think she's pretty sure about herself. Yeah. That's one important point for an athlete. You really need this kind of confidence. Like, if you know you can do it, it's important that it doesn't pressure you. But you need to take like the confidence of this like okay i can do it and yeah. i'm gonna show here what i can and i think that's a really good thing what we can see here from her because she has already won a lot of competitions and she has obviously got the pressure that everybody is expecting her to do a great wrestle but i think she managed to handle with this quite good and yeah turns it into a positive way and i think that's really important for a competitor Mina is starting to uh, just come up to this little area now where we're going to see uh, a little bit more interest. And it's, it's, uh, it, it is strange actually with the, 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 the way the course has worked out. And obviously it was set this way deliberately that the early stages was there just, uh, you know, not really expecting to take anybody out but was going to sap a little bit of strength. And then from this little chicane area onwards, you know, it's a world of pain. And, you yeah. know, we just saw Magdalena come come, come to grief in uh, whatever the number was. Was it 48 or something like that? 50 plus. Um, you know, and, and yet, even from 50 plus onwards, there's still there bad a holes. few movements yeah. to come on there. No, number so five. Oh, but here, as you can see, Mina is actually struggling a little bit. I think it's like a little bit um, uncomfortable movements. And we have also seen that last year in the years before, sometimes in uncomfortable movements. She's hesitating and she just doesn't want to risk too much because she's yeah. got a lot of strength, mainly a lot of endurance. So yeah. she's just took a little bit of time there, didn't she? And uh, she might pay for that a little bit later when she gets yeah. up to the top area of the wall. This that that, that little delay might just that just might just hurt her. We will see. 
Magdalena actually was very fast. She she still had two minutes on the clock when she fell. Yeah, she had a very fluid go. It was all going fast and all saluting pretty well. All the awkward movements. Yeah, she made them look pretty easy and confident. And I think that's a good thing. And at the moment, Mina is still struggling a little bit, and I'm not sure yeah. if those visitations are. Yeah, you're right. I think she's going to pay for them, for sure, as you said. Absolutely. Says. She's hesitating here. She wasn't sure how to handle that particular problem. She's not looking comfortable there. She's going to do a little bit of a Risa Alter here, by the looks of it. And she's not happy at all. She's going to have to make a bit of a jump here. This could be the end. And Oh, oh she's oh, held! Oh, she's oh, my oh, goodness! Oh, 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 no! Incredible. Well, you know, we, we knew she, she paid for it in the end, didn't she? But not that early, but yeah, this movement was again another uncomfortable, risky movement, and I think that brought her like completely out then. Well, Mina Markovic, incredible, that, uh, and a real shock to be honest. But she, you know, it, it, you know, I think you called it, Sebastian, absolutely spot on that she was having trouble earlier on on those two black holds that were, you know, she wasn't sure how to do it. She had two or three attempts, and then she got to the area where Risa Otto had problems. And she, she did show in quick like this area here. This was amazing that she yeah, held on, didn't then she? Just yeah, it was too much. And I think the problem is that after the first time she was struggling a little bit, she didn't have the chance with some movements to recover again or to do a few movements more that were a bit more comfortable. It was just carrying on, yeah, like uncomfortable and hard, yeah. mainly getting harder. So I think that just brought her out. We're looking at the podium at the moment, and it's uh, yeah, we're just having a discussion. So it's Magdalena Rock in currently in gold medal position, Anak Verhoeven currently in bronze in silver medal position, but with Kim Jane to come. I've just been told, and here she comes. I've just been told that there could we should, could be in a situation if Kim Jane actually wins here, and, and you know, she has won the first three World Cups so far this but season. Actually, isn't it? Jesse Caputz in second position at the moment? No, no, um, no, Magdalena Rock um, is in second. Um, we'll just get the leaderboard up, actually. Just, uh, oh, we just don't, don't have it updated. Well, it, this is Cam Jane anyway. We'll just uh, we'll just check, we'll come back to you on that in a, just in a second. Yeah, Jesse Caputz because she, because of countback, because you remember Anna Verhoeven and Jesse Caputz felt exactly at the same movement, but Jessica Pilt right. qualified a little bit better Jessica, in semi -finals. Absolutely right. You know, it's a good job we've got somebody in the commentary who knows what he's talking about. <laughs> we, we just, we'll just go and have some pizza around the corner. <laughs> we'll, leave, we'll leave you here on your own. <laughs> oh, no, you're doing your job great as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll, gi I'll give you that five euros later. But, uh, <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Jessica Pills is leading Anna, um, uh, Anna Verhoeven uh, for that medal. So... Uh, just ignore the last minute of, or just skip forward on YouTube and ignore what we've been talking about. This is Kim Jong-un and I'm really looking forward to seeing how she handles these. She's actually topped everything so far today. She's the only person to have topped all the way through and in the, in the female category. Of course, Jakob Schubert had topped until he uh, came to grief a little bit earlier on. And uh, the... Uh, Interesting to see Kim Jane. She has these little red ball tattoos at the top of her shoulder. So uh, interesting to see sponsorship on the actual skin. You don't see that very often. <laughs> no, that's quite uncommon. Quite right. unique. But it, yeah, well, climbers, it's unique. But shoulders do get on shot a lot. So yeah, it's a good sure. Place. <laughs> well, and like a unique style for for a unique climber, I guess. Yeah, I hope they're not permanent tattoos because if that sponsorship ends, it's going to be very painful. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. In fact, uh, reminded by my director, who's doing his job excellently tonight also, that uh, the World Bouldering Championships that are coming up in Munich will not be on the IFSC website. They are being covered by a Red Bull TV. So have a little look at the IFSC Climbing. There'll be a link through directly from the IFSC-climbing.org website. And you'll be able to click straight to that and watch on Red Bull TV, not on YouTube. Well, I do believe the replays are going to be available on YouTube afterwards. So, um, pretty much as, as happened in Innsbruck, I believe. Kim Jong-in here. Really strong this year. Has Very won every single World Cup so far. Yeah. 
<laughs> this and isn't, year. Isn't it amazing as well? Because you know Kim Jones, you know, she's not a um, you know as we've seen us also with Akio Naguchi, you know, not incredibly strong muscle-wise. And you know she's an Asian athlete, and you know they, they have much more grace about them, but still have got the strength in there because they they pull those bodies up like no no trouble at all. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I would say that Jane Kim still has got a pretty wide A index. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. No, she's and strong. mainly she has got an incredible endurance. She's able to rest and wait so long and everywhere, and it, she just makes every movement look so easy. It's incredible, yeah. and I think, yeah, at the moment she looks like quite unbeatable. Yeah. I'm really curious how she's going to do in this route, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if she takes again the gold yeah, medal. Absolutely, and you know, and it is like poetry watching her. You know, she's. She's just in, in her office, she's doing her job, she's just, you know, it, it's, but the way that she moves, it's almost like an art form sometimes to see her climbing. She's not struggling against the wall. No, 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 it's like, it's really nice to watch her and yeah. sometimes it really seems unhuman if you compare it with, with the other climbers. Yeah. They're, they're struggling in some places and yeah. she just climbs over, it's so fluent and relaxed. And she's training like a beast, as I know. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, we only see you guys uh, competing. We don't actually uh, have to see all the training. Here are the scores. As oh yeah, are. lucky you. <laughs> as you see, Magdalena Rock and Jessica Pills. Currently, it's an Austria one-two. But watch out, because here is Kim Jae-in, currently and undoubtedly the form athlete on the tour. Looking very, very strong. Indeed. Very strong. In fact, yeah. She's looking like still warming up in this room. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just a yeah. slight correction uh, uh, from earlier. Actually, the uh, from Munich for the World Championships. The semi-finals will be on YouTube. It's only the finals which will be on Red Bull. So uh, thank you very much, uh, all our, su our support staff on, from the RFSC, just reminding me of that. Sorry, carry on, Se Sebastian. Yeah, and it's what you just mentioned, the part of training. It's like, usually it's just what you see is the competition and uh, the climbing there and how the people are doing, if they're doing good or not so good, but it's always like so much work behind it. And that's like the point, it's often forgotten, like, all the athletes are working so much for it and yeah. it's the same if you are the top three uh, but also the top 15 everybody is like always giving yeah for, uh, the clock so has much stopped best. at the moment i don't know what's happened with our clock but uh, ignore that for the moment that's obviously not uh, correct um, they, they do have a stopwatch which is a backup uh, on site so uh, if something's gone wrong with the electronics they uh, they can have a little look at the watch in their hands well, um, here is here is the awkward part so this is this is the interesting area now yeah for sure and she is still hanging really relaxed though yeah. and I don't know if you just saw it but hanging on this hold and resting she just watch it the clock which is fixed on her harness it's a yellow clock there yeah. And it's fixed on her harness and she was just checking the time actually. Really? Because we're talking about time right now, I just yeah. realized of that. Because yeah. she's also sometimes a kind of slow climber because she can wait wait in everywhere for ages as she's got yeah. this unhuman fitness. But sometimes that also makes her struggling with the time or it used to. Yeah. Her time there, but oh, oh look at that she oh doesn't even need her feet there. It's <laughs> incredible she just moved now that, remember that that took out two athletes and in fact oh. it took out Mila Markovic and what's she doing here she's, yeah. she, she's going back she's, she's turning around this that's a really cool thing there. and I think here that's what the root setters actually expected to do yeah a little toe hold on that one yeah, how's she gonna move on to the next one that's the uh, it's gonna be interesting Having a little think about this. Yeah. Realize that uh, she's got herself in a little tangle here now, hasn't she? Said that she can't yeah, naturally progress on. She's gonna have to try and turn herself. Oh, look that! She's just taking foothold and stuff. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's, that's and she's in the right way. Yeah. Then. There you go. How did she make that look easy? <laughs> 
funny comment on the uh, on the YouTube chat that uh, the reason that Matt King Lane is uh, doing so well is because she's got Did red you just wings see on that? She, she was just she was just taking this foothold with the volume as a pinch and shaking. That's yeah. unbelievable. Still looking super fresh here, and now it's about she's about to challenge. I think Jessica Pills here. Yeah, yeah. Here she is challenging Jessica Pills. Very good. This is very just easy. Yeah, we're just sitting back and just watching an absolute master of the art here. She is just so on top of her game. And now it starts getting really interesting. Oh, just yeah. hearing there's a, she's having trouble on the clock. I'm hearing there's, there's only she ten, has just 10 seconds or 10 so seconds left. left. So she's going to have to go quickly. I don't know what number she's on at the moment. The clock is counting. I really uh, apologise. Oh. Uh, yeah. I don't know what hold she's on at the moment. She's not 43. Ah, but she's further than... Yeah, I'm sure she's gone further there. I, I think something's gone wrong with the electronic system where yeah they're, they're updating it now i don't know why we, we didn't have it on screen well i believe that she's she's won this event yeah um looks I, like we sure. didn't see anybody reach that point so no uh, the electronics have caught up but it, she's she's done an absolutely incredible move there she got to those two circular um holds which nobody else has got to yeah it was really strong effort from her yeah and i believe she still could have climbed quite a few movements further but she ran out of time. Just incredible. Um, so we're just going to wait and see. It's all down to the officials. We're not sure. We're not 100% sure yet. It's very, very close between Kim Jane and Magdalena Rock. We will find out very soon. She's uh, the crowd are applauding. And I believe, I believe the officials have gone. For Magdalena Rock, by the looks of it, she's with a with wow, that's yeah, incredible. It's, it's Magdalena, and this time really strong. We're, uh, we're not getting a lot of information through from uh, upstairs, we're a little bit away, so we're not able. But let's have a listen. Well, it's great to see Magdalena Rock. She's got tears in her eyes. Sebastian, yeah, yeah that's what a great awesome, player. really awesome to see the first time she's winning a lead World Cup. Yeah, that's that's beautiful to see in uh, in a home country, in a home event. Here we see Kim Jae-in. We're just uh, we're, we're going to get the uh, official scores through in a second, but uh, I didn't realise, and obviously the clock uh, disappearing. It was it was a shame, but uh, uh, but we lost the clock on screen, but. Um, you know, obviously she was having time issues and I didn't realise that. She didn't seem to be going slow. No, today, it didn't look like that, but I think the thing is also that for her it always looks so relaxed that you don't really realise of the time. You kind of forget to think about the time. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe we just got all entrapped with her with her ability and, and probably the fact that she was so she was like silk going up there. That's the confirmation. There is the official scores. Fifty plus for Magdalena Rock. She takes the gold. Kim Jong-in of 49 and Jessica Pills of 44 plus winning on countback over Anna Verhoeven. What an incredible ending there and really strong. Kim Jong-in having time trouble. That is quite incredible. But she's going to take a, a silver here today. And that's what I just mentioned before about the time, you know. That's why she's wearing the clock and her harness yeah. in order to not time up. But well, this time it happened. And I guess it's just such a long route that it can happen. Yeah, well, absolutely. She has won so many competitions, so <laughs> I guess it's also okay if someone else wants to win. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we are going to be getting uh, the presentations through. Very, there's the official scores coming through. As you see, Magdalena Rock, Kim Jae-in, Jessica Pills are our gold, silver and bronze for tonight. 
it's uh, it's been an absolutely fantastic evening uh, sebastian i've got to thank you for coming in you've made my day it's been great listening to you and cool. your knowledge about the sport you know thank you very much indeed, it was sebastian. really nice to be commentating here with you well it, it's it's lovely to see you on the wall in your very distinctive uh, red mohican uh, if you want to see uh, uh, sebastian climbing he was in the semi-finals just missed out by one position yesterday but uh, we're going to see a hell of a lot more from, from you over the coming years and, and if you ever fail to qualify you're always more than welcome to come and talk to us here thank you a lot i will use that opportunity okay well thank you very much sebastian we'll uh, we'll let you head off into the night and uh, it's great to have you on board and we're just going to take the presentations here and then uh, i'll be running up the stairs which doesn't happen very often if you, if you know who i am and i'll be running up to go and do interviews the crowd are heading off into the evening as well but uh, they, they, were, they are going to do the presentation. So what we're going to do is uh, it looks like uh, the presentations are not um, going to happen quite yet. So what we're going to do, oh, it looks as if they are ready. Um, okay, uh, well, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to just play a quick interview with uh, Helmut Knarvel, which we took earlier on. He's uh, Mr. Imst in terms of climbing and uh, we're going to play that right now, and then we'll go and get some interviews upstairs. So we'll be back very shortly. Helmut Knabel, um, it's a great pleasure to be here in Imst, in your hometown. Um, we thought we'd just take a little bit of time with you to come and say hi, and uh, this fantastic World Cup here in Imst. Um, first of all, let's just go back to when you really first started climbing, and. Um, you know, you've, you've been in Imst all your life as well, haven't you? I was born in Imst and I had only two years where I was outside. I was teaching in Sölden, in Ötztal, and the other time I stayed the whole time in Imst. I am 55 years old and yeah. Imst, it's a, for me it's a beautiful city in the center of the Alps. <clears throat> and it's also a city who really takes care of climbing. It's allowed here to climb everywhere on the rocks. We have really good uh, relationship with the environmental uh, groups and so it's a perfect place for climbing. I started climbing in my mid middle school when I was 13, 14 years old. We realized that climbing is a funny sport and we start climbing. It was very dangerous for us because we didn't know how to deal with rope, with harness and all these things but we were lucky and survived. When did you start getting involved in some of the organizational side of things? Like you, you wear the IFSC badge with pride, you're the, you're the vice president of the IFSC and have been for a long time, and you know, you're one of the senior members now of the IFSC. So when did that start happening? Uh, the first relationship with competition climbing on a difficult wall I had in the Festival of the Mountains in Innsbruck, where the Austrian Alpen Club, Robert Renzler organized the uh, the World Cup and also in 1993 the World Championship. He asked me this time to help him in organizing this competition and from this time on I was in the contact with competition climbing and the main reason why we are doing this is that our children uh, in 1992 visit a children competition close to Innsbruck and my uh, daughter and my son asked me can we start, can we try? I said yes, why not? And the advantage was to both win the competition and from this time on the family decided to go more in sport climbing instead of mountaineering. So we're sat here next to this really impressive wall that people are currently setting a route for in the background and um, you know that must have been a complete different sort of mindset for you that you know you're an outdoors type person and suddenly you there's the business side of running a commercial gym that's for the public and you know how did you go through that process how did that work? Uh, the Business work is done by Susi. This is very important to say. It's, I am only a volunteer for Susi. I help her to do the uh, job. Uh, in 2002, Susi went to the climbing gym, the indoor gym, and we organized a lot of competition. And in 2006, we realized that the place inside of the gym is too small. And this time, we organized in the center of the city the Speed World Youth Championship. And the problem was that it was raining, and so we had to stop the competition and go back to the gym. And then we stayed together with politicians from IMS and said, if you want to go on with climbing competition in IMS, then we need an outdoor wall. The wall must be protected against rain, and then we can start. And from 2007 on, we were thinking about this project, 
In 2008 we got all the offers and 2009 we start with the building and so we could open this outdoor wall in 
Riesen Talent im Jugendbereich. Schnuppert Eigenkeit, Eigenkeit in die Weltkampf hinein. Und dann wird ein dritter Platz beim Handwerk für Jesse, Jessica Hill.
You're both very young girls on the scene. Is this the is this the new era of Austrian climbing that's you know picking up medals at big World Cups? Yeah, it's amazing. I can't believe it. It's my first podium, and I'm just happy. Yeah, your very first podium, and here it is. And you've got an Austrian teammate with you, so congratulations. Just a, a quick final quick question for Magdalena. This is your first gold. Is it? Is this your first podium? You've been taking silver so far, isn't it? your first gold and in your home crowd you must be really really happy yeah i'm really happy all right well congratulations we, we'll let you head off into the night well done thank you thank you Joining us here, uh, first question is the one everybody wants to know. What happened up there towards the end? You were running, were you, did you realize you were running out of time? Uh, uh, at the beginning, I didn't know, but uh, end, end of the I climbed, I yeah. saw the time's up. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but you didn't know that uh, you were in the last 10 seconds when you were on the around the 49 area, the, the, the hold up there. Uh, I knew the time is not so many left, yeah. but I didn't know uh, times of that point. Yeah, okay. If you could say the same to me in Korean as well, please, for our, our friends back home in Korea. Uh, same. About same, exactly the same, about the time uh, running out and you didn't realize. 어 처음 등반할 때는 시간 초가 된줄 모르고 계속 이제 등반을 하다가 나중에 이제 시간 초가 된걸 알아서 네 등반을 중단했는데 네 많이 좀 아쉽습니다. 네. Yeah. Well, you have three golds already, um, so one silver is maybe not too bad, but uh, your form at the moment, we're watching you climbing, you're, you're looking so good and you, you're putting a lot of work into your training right now, aren't you? Uh, actually, this season I gave up the Bouldering World Cup because of my knees, yeah. 
So I could prepare more, just focus on the wreath, I think, yeah. Well, it's great to see you and it's lovely to see you on the wall. It's an absolute joy to watch and uh, we'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, Jakob has joined us. I didn't realise we were still live. Uh, yes, yes, don't forget the sponsors. Uh, Jakob, tell us about your climb t uh, t this evening. Uh, yeah, it was, was great. Uh, climbing in front of a home crowd is always amazing. Um, third place in the end, fourth World Cup of the season, uh, fourth podium. So yeah. I'm really happy about that. Yeah. Um, still have to admit, I like really wanted to win here today, of course. Uh, I felt really good in semifinals and uh, qualification rounds. Yeah. Um, I had three tops going into the final, so I was like yeah. really confident and I think I feel really strong right now. But uh, I messed up the route, I, I didn't really get into a flow, I feel like. Um, uh, I couldn't really read the sequences well enough and um, yeah. just took too much power before the roof and I was really pumped going, going into the roof already. Yeah. And I think I can be really happy with the third place in the end. You know, you've just answered three of my questions in one there, so well done on that one. But we were saying in commentary that, you know, we, we thought you'd be really frustrated because we felt that you had so much more to give and that you went at a point having sort of approached it possibly the wrong way. Is that what you were feeling, that you still had a lot of power left? Um, no, I mean, when I fell in the end, I didn't have, like... You were gone. Like, yeah, I was really pumped, I think. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you can't really be uh, really mad about a third place at all, of course, but I was a little frustrated, to yeah. be honest, uh, just because I know that I could have done better if I wouldn't have done uh, some mistakes, like, yeah. in the bottom part, like, yeah. uh, I think the problem was not how I climbed in the roof, that was fine, but I was already tired going into the roof because I messed up a sequence before it. I understand. And how's the finger feeling? Because you've been you were out during the bouldering season. <laughs> Is that 100% now? Uh, I wouldn't call it 100%, but uh, I feel really good now, and uh, I'm really glad uh, about the situation. I think every week I feel I feel better, and like uh, since China, the development was like and the progress was really good, yeah. and I felt like. Every single walk up, I feel stronger, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I was really happy with my performance in the previous rounds here, yeah. and I'm really confident going to the next comps. Well, if this is not you at 100%, then you know, watch out, well no, I mean, because you know you're you're climbing absolutely. You're at the top of your your ability at the moment, aren't you? This is as good as I've ever seen you climbing. Yeah, I mean, it's always hard to say. Like, you can't really prepare it to like um, last seasons, but yeah, I feel really really good now, and I think um, you know. My finger is not really um, doing any problems anymore. Yeah. Like I can climb like yeah. I would have climbed with, without an injury. I just feel like um, maybe a little bit of pain once in a while, but I think that will be gone pretty soon. And um, yeah, I hope I can like, like the shape can even get like better until the yeah. World Championship, but I'm already pretty confident. Well, it's great that you've put Austria on the podium in the men's and I've got to just ask you about the women's category. I know we're not supposed to say this, but it must have left you feeling really good to see two Austrians and two young Austrians on the podium in the women. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's amazing. Magdalena worked so hard and she's doing so well this year. She's just incredibly strong. I mean, three second places. So uh, I think she really earned that first place. And uh, Jessica is uh, one of our big talents. And yeah, I'm really happy for those guys. The future's bright in all respects. Uh, Jakob, thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, spoke, you were remembered, last time I spoke to you was 2010, you were a lot younger, you were a lot bigger and, and you're, you're a man now of course. And how was it today with you on the climb? Well actually the climb didn't feel that hard but me, I felt pretty weak while I was climbing. But actually it was quite hard in the end as I could see like on the other climbers. But well I think I climbed pretty well up to the lip of the roof. And then I maybe rested a little bit way too much and then I get 
flash bump and fell. And when I fell, I didn't think that it would be enough victory, enough for the victory. But Jakob and Ramon made some mistakes, so I'm pretty much like a lucky winner. I feel, but at the same time, I feel that I can climb harder and I can be yeah. maybe even in a better shape. We were all disappointed in the commentary area because we were hoping that you know yourself or Jakob or Ramon were going to go up into that top area and we're going to see. Those. We never saw those problems up there. But, but you know, when you looked at it, you know, did you realize that that little area, because I know the roof setter didn't actually, you know, his feeling was that that wouldn't cause so many problems. What, what was it in that particular area that gave all the men uh, an issue? Yeah, on the second blocks in the roof, uh, there was quite, you, you should like flip around and put a toe hook, which is something that maybe it did come on someone's mind, but I think it was it looked just too risky. <laughs> so And that's the trouble with lead climbing, isn't it? That if you you know if you take a risk, it's all about minimizing the risk, isn't it, sometimes? And if, if you see a particular move that you think is too risky, you're gonna go for the safe option at the end of the day. Yes, sometimes it's, it's hard to gauge and it's about fast decisions. Sometimes you it's better to go for the risk, sometimes it's better to play it safe. You never know. Personally, you must be thrilled. You've got a gold. We were saying when you came out, this season so far, by your standards, has been a little bit disappointing. Uh, you know, you've not even made a podium so far. What's going on, Adam? And so here you are now. You've got a gold. Do you, do you feel that it's it's back to business and you're back to form? Well, I think I've been pretty strong, even on, even on the first three comps this season. But in the semi-finals in Lee, in China, my heel slipped. Then in Chamonix I skipped the bolt in the qualification and in Briançon then the finals was cancelled and in semi-finals it was like a weird move and I did a little mistake. At the same time I, I felt like I'm strong enough to do well but it was like in any of the route I could really prove it. So. And that's the thing with lead isn't it? It's such minor little differences that make the difference between gold and maybe sometimes not even qualifying for the final. So you've taken time out before and you've come back and obviously that you know the international climbing competitions are very very strong. What you know what are your views over the next the rest of the season? Will you be competing in Hehan and you know are, are you st are you still doing bouldering as seriously as you were doing in the past? Well, I've never really taken bouldering that seriously, <laughs> but <laughs> well, you've not been doing bad if you say it's not serious. Yes, but uh, for me, always lead has been like the king discipline, and it's really motivating for me uh, to train for lead because at the same time, I, I, I feel that bouldering is even more about luck, and you can be pretty much lucky winner, and you don't have to be the strongest at all. Nevertheless, I'm doing Munich for sure, the World Championships in bouldering, and I'm pretty psyched because it's something that it can, it can make me more, like little bit uh, emptier mind for the next uh, for the world championships in lead in Kikon yeah. if I will do well and for the rest of the season so uh, season I will do just all the stages of the World Cup and yeah. let's see what happens well it's gonna be great to see you at all these stages and this lovely smile that you're giving us and, and I'm just amazed that you're not really taking bouldering that seriously and yet you're you're competing at the very top level so uh, Adam it's great to see you congratulations and well done today Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, with me now, Sean McCorm. Last but not least, Sean, tell us about your day today. Well, uh, I mean, throughout the day, I didn't really do anything. But then, uh, yeah, one route today, came back for the finals. I was really excited just to be in finals. It's the first time I've been in finals here on the outdoor, outdoor wall in Imst. So I was excited. Uh, yeah, pretty normal warm up, uh, normal route. Uh, but I fell pretty high off the second volume, but I was really excited how I did. I never would have thought it would have landed me in a second place. Uh, but eventually, I saw people make mistakes, fall half a move below me twice. Adam obviously passed me by a couple of moves, and yeah, I end up with a silver medal. Do you feel a little bit frustrated? Like, you know, everybody I've spoken to have said that they just felt that they could have gone past there, but when they actually got to the problem, it seemed a lot harder than how it looked from down here. Was that the same for you? I'm probably the only one that is going to be the exact opposite. <laughs> I'm like so thankful I even get to the roof yeah. and sometimes pass the roof. Uh, for me, this wall is really hard for me to climb. It's 22 meters tall, and there's, I think I clipped 15 draws in the finals, and it felt like I would just do two moves, oh, there's another clip, oh, there's another clip. And for me, it's all about how long I'm on the wall. When I have to clip, it means I'm only on one arm, like I'm not really resting, I'm still really tense. And so, no, I'm really happy with where I got. I could have fallen in a few places. Uh, you know, I made really small errors, but nothing big. Uh, I found a few really key rests, especially with my heels. And then eventually, I did a move where I just jumped to get the plus. And if I hadn't have gotten that plus, I'd have been in fourth place. So 
a few really strategic moves, and uh, yeah, like, like I said, I get a silver medal, and it's, yeah, it's great. The last time we talked in Toronto, we did a little interview, and we talked about you and Jakob having a little bit of a head-to-head, -head and he's back again. <laughs> Yeah. He doesn't go away, does he? I thought he had an injury that was going to take him out for a long time, and he's come back very quickly. Yeah, I knew his injury wouldn't hold him back. Uh, so as a competitor, he's, he's such a competitor that he's just going to go for it, and it might even hurt his finger a bit, but he's so good, and it's actually rare that I'm on the podium and that I'm ahead of Jakob, so yeah. yeah so. Enjoy it. Yeah. One of the things about the, the climbing that really has been noticeable this season with lead, and it's, it's fascinating how seasons progress, we've seen an influx of youngsters who have come through and you know we had Sebastian Halinki there double world youth champion who's come through only just male triple sorry he, he didn't correct me you did um, but you know he, he, he only just missed out by one spot on the final tonight and you know there are so many good athletes coming through you, you know does that give you an extra little bit of surge when you see these guys coming through it's a it's a funny question um, they're amazing climbers and I find that the biggest thing that they have trouble with is just competing at the World Cup level. They come from competitions where, yeah, it's totally cliche, but they're big, a big fish in a small pond. They're coming into a big pond and they're a small fish. So they come in, they're incredible climbers, but sometimes they let, they're like, uh, oh, like maybe not for me, but oh, Sean's here, like uh, maybe he's gonna beat me. Oh, Jakob's here, Ramon's here, like Adam Andres here. Like, oh, that means there's only three or four spots in finals. And really, if they climb really well, they can beat us on any yeah. given day. So it's, it's hard for them, and I know it's hard for them. I remember even I went through that stage the first time I was trying to make finals. So it's all part of the process, and some climbers deal with it better than others. I even remember when Doman was having a hard time getting into finals, and, and I kind of talked to him just slightly, and I was like, ah, like, no, oh, you're a really good climber. You just have to believe that you can make finals, and it kind of changed his way he looked at it, and then he started making finals. Obviously, he had his first podium this year, and, and now he's really psyched. So I'm sure it'll be the same for Sebastian. He knows he can be in finals. Maybe it'll help for maybe just me to say it, and then, uh, yeah, he'll be in finals maybe even this year. Just for you personally now, you're one of the few athletes around who does a lot of bouldering as well, and you've got a world championship coming up. So forget about lead for a little while. You've had a little spell with lead and get, get the other head on and it's, it's back to bouldering. Are you going to do a little bit more training now on the bouldering side with, with Munich coming up? Yeah, of course. Uh, Munich's in about three weeks now. Yeah, three weeks. So basically from now until then, I'll do only boulder training. I mean, I also go to Salt Lake to do the Psycho Block, to, to do the psycho oh, block nice competition and I'll be at OR. Uh, but then, yeah, bouldering training and then uh, a really good week of rest. Uh, some people might say, like, oh, you're going to rest for a week. But no, resting is really key, especially with the mental aspect that comes with the World Championships. And uh, your physical part is going to be fine. And mental is hard. And I usually deal with it pretty well. But I'm really looking forward to the competition. Right. Well, we'll see you in Munich. And well done getting a silver medal here today. Congratulations, Sean. Thanks. Not on camera. So there we have it. We've managed to talk to all six medalists here tonight. It's been an absolutely wonderful experience here in Imst, Austria. And uh, we're going to uh, wish you a good, good night. Wherever you are in the world watching this, I know there's a lot of you from uh, all, all countries. So it's good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. We're going to be in Munich next. It's the IFSC World Championships, the World Boulder Championships. Semi-finals will be on YouTube. The finals will be on Red Bull. I'll be very happy to see you there. In fact, you can see it on the screen right now. Those are the events that are coming up there with the World Championships. We're going to Arco in Italy. Uh, we're, and uh, as you can see, we're running down. We're Spain in Gijon for the World League Championships. Then it's New Caledonia for the World Youth Championships. Apologies, Sebastian Helenki as well. Triple World Youth Champion. <laughs> yeah, that's, he's definitely a, a name for the future. Then it's the Asia Tour for lead climbing with uh, Korea, with Mokpo, Wujiang of China, and Inzai of Japan. And finally, at the very end of the season, it's Kranja for the final lead World Cup of 2014. Uh, really interesting to chat to the athletes there. Very interesting to hear the comments from Kim Jain as well, in particular, um, about how she uh, really didn't realize. She, she knew she was tight, but she didn't know she was running out. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up here now. This is the IFSC World Cup for IMST now closing. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Adrian Battersby. Thanks to Mark Pittam and Mike Roper, who's been doing sterling work behind the scenes. And also some good camera work we've seen from the guys at Ega Media, who've given us uh, some great pictures tonight. Thank you very much for watching. I'll wish you a good, good night. <laughs>